Waiting. All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a, another 5e D&D one-shot entitled The Essence of Life, written by the uh, very talented uh, Tony Thompson. This is my second attempt at this game, and hopefully it will be a lot better than my first one. Um, this is a level 4 adventure, and just FYI, there may be adult language from time to time, because sometimes I speak like a child. So, anyway. Same on you. The no, okay. Yeah, yeah, no crap. Uh, so anyway, our wonderful adventurers are all uh, members of the uh, small town where Count Wonderfell holds court. And uh, his barony extends beyond just this small town into the reaches of the western lands of the great kingdom of Westmark. And uh, apparently there was a great ruckus in the morning as somebody came ran screaming from the woods, screaming bloody murder, and he was taken to the king. And, I mean, to the Count. And so Count Wonderfell has, in lieu of this, sent out invitations to some of his most esteemed adventurers and people of some note into this uh, community. These folks have answered the call to go into the Count's uh, heap to see what is the matter and what to do is and what needs to be done. And we will go ahead and introduce yourself and your character and... Any channels you all, if you're recording, by all means, give yourself a shout out and anybody else you'd like to shout out to. And so we shall start on the end with uh, Dave. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave, and I don't have any channels to plug. Uh, today I will be playing Lucius Everard Clay. He was once a teacher at the uh, College of Arcanum, he has been since discredited but uh, did not lose his abilities. Um, and he had hoped when he opened the summons to speak to Count Winterfell that it would be a reinstatement of his rights, but unfortunately, no. But out of his good nature, he has come to assist the community and because uh, that's what heroes do. Uh, just curious, but uh, do you have headphones or anything you could use? Because you're really... Uh, getting an echo on your voice there. I'm echoing when I talk? Oh, yeah. It, it actually kind of makes for a good effect if you're doing with something uh, along the lines of, you know, a wizard or something. I think that would be pretty cool. But... Okay. And then we'll start uh, with uh, uh, Dave now. I mean, sorry, uh, Dylan. Sorry about that. Uh, something is wrong with the app. Um, I am a half barbarian. My name half barbarian, half dwarf. And um, I am a soldier infinity. Can't pronounce that word. That word is too wrong for me. Screw my life. Whoops. Bye bye. Um, 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 I. Left the army because um, I heard there was other um, there was other places and other people that needed me help. Okay, very good. And then uh, we'll go with Katie. Go ahead and introduce yourself and your character as she enters the keep of Count Wonderfell. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Pierre I uh, grew up in a remote temple where I uh, discovered that I had a bit of talent for spoken word and magical manipulation of the world through me. So I have studied to be a bard and um, I'm out sort of answering the call and also hoping to find out more information maybe about my heritage. Oh, you want to keep? Oh, let's see if we can possibly find something out about that in this little adventure. And then Scott Mack. Okay, hi folks, I'm Scott Mack. Um, I'm going to be playing Gimbal Timbers, a level 4 gnome barbarian. Um, grew up as a street auction. Um, 
So not only has he got a chip on his shoulder, but he's size, he's got another one chip on his shoulder, but that day was a sweet option. Um, I would also, um, he's basically just looking for the biggest challenge he can. He, he wants to find the biggest opponent he can and down him. And so far, no one has yet proved my mind. So he's hoping that with this adventure that he might be able to find someone. And if he can't find anyone, he will go and make someone to find. Um, I'd also like to ask the the AM, Uncle Michael, instead of asking for rage, um, a gimbal at any point says, See you, Sonny. And then whatever follows, that will be a call for him to be in rage. Uh, what was that last part? Rather than, say, uh, asking for rage, um, a gimbal at any point comes round to anyone and says, See you, Sonny. And it rather follows, I see you, Sonny, you're getting it. Oh, see you, Sonny, this is going right up your map. Anything like that, that is a call for him to start raging. Okay. You start raging there in the, uh, the keep. Okay. As you all enter the keep, you, you will see that it is a, a very uh, modest place. It's not a, popu- a prosperous county that he uh, lords over, but it is decent. And uh, sitting at his, uh, just off to his side on dais is a local merchant named Bishop that you all are familiar with. He's a merchant of some renown. He comes, at least in your village, he comes and goes all the time, transporting things here and thither, uh, bringing in new stock and taking more stuff out. And the Count of Wonderfell uh, greets you all, especially the little gnome who's raging, and he's like, hey, uh, calm, calm down now, sir. There's no need for uh, you to get all excited quite yet. Uh, in case you all haven't heard, there's been a bit of a to-do this morning. Our good merchant bishop come running into town from the woods, screaming and hollering, and apparently, according to him, he was bringing a uh, wagon load of those wonderful potatoes from Haven's Meadow. You all know Haven's Meadow, just a... Uh, few miles away over there where they grow the best white potatoes of all time. Well, he was picking up a load of those potatoes in his cart and uh, bringing it here and spending the night in their wonderful tavern when all of a sudden that they were uh, being taken over. Uh, These humanoids, uh, armed and armored quite well. Uh, From his description, I believe that they're hobgoblins. Started ransacking and marauding the town. Now, most of my soldiers at the moment are on the eastern sides, uh, dealing with some recent orc raidings there, and they've taken a position over a ford in that area that the orcs have been raiding over. So I seem to be out of soldiers at the moment, and uh, only have the few remaining gauls for the keep here. So I need some assistance to uh, go to Haven's Meadow to determine uh, what help they may need. Uh, uh, what's going on? Uh, he's, he told me that uh, all he did was uh, wake to the hobgoblins running about, running amok, uh, burning and slaying folks right and left, and he managed to escape the slaughter and come here. But I don't know if uh, Haven's Meadow is okay. There are not many soldiers there at all, just simple farmer folk. But uh, uh, y'all have any questions for me or... Or Bishop? I aye, aye, aye. See these hobgoblins. How big are they? Uh, yes, hobgoblins. Uh, how, 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 big, how big a challenge are we talking about here? Because I don't just want to go wasting my time in any little fucking of them. I want the biggest, the meanest, the ugliest, and then see. That's long sword that's going right where the sun don't shine. Uh, well, hobgoblins are, are pretty bad. Uh, you know, they they're all fierce warriors. Uh, no match for uh, for you, I'd imagine. Uh, you little ball of ferociousness. But uh, they are. Who are you calling that? I'm no <laughs> that. I'm average. Oh, you are not a bad guy. You are on the wrong side. I'm the right guy. Um, well, this is all kind of ongoing. Um, could I can, uh, can we make anything to see for the 
be something else and can we make any kind of um, insight or perception kind of check to see if he's like, mad or if he's lying or if he is indeed telling the truth as he's told? Uh, sure. Uh, do you have any real reason to suspect that the Count is lying about this situation, though? Um, I, I do. Just all, just all seems a bit convenient <laughs> at the moment. I suspect everything, you know, the way my games are fun. <laughs> uh, fair uh, enough. Well, I mean... Um, 18? Uh, 18. Yeah. Uh... He appears somewhat suspicious of this whole thing himself, but he is, as far as he knows, he's telling the truth. But he, he also does appear, appear with your apprehension in this, like there's something right about this. Yeah, cool. Um. So, Lucius, am I still echoing? Uh, I don't know if it's not as bad. Down. I think it's down. Echo in the moment. Okay. So Lucia says, "Yes, okay, things are not always what they seem." As he looks to the the count in, in a telling look. These hobgoblins oh. are these tribes of the local area. They they're typical, or is this a new incursion? Um, we do top goblins and orcs and such much like that raiding in this area. It's, um, while I have not seen these hobgoblins, uh, I do know that it's not unheard of. Uh, I don't know what they were. Uh, where is my stuff? <laughs> I do not know what standards they wear or anything, but perhaps a uh, bishop can help you out with that a little bit. Right, so, um, and uh, with that bishop will stop. Oh, and with that bishop will Oh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, as, as the good count said, I was uh, delivering some potatoes to uh, Haven's Meadow, or from Haven's Meadow, actually. And uh, it happened at night. I didn't get a good look at them, but... Uh, for chance, their uh, armor had a uh, uh, blood, like like red paint, like it was dripping blood on them. The the, the uh, from a skull, maybe. I, it was dark. I, I'm not sure. Um, I've seen uh, these things before in my travels. It's, it's not an uncommon tribe, but that's beside the point. We we. We must hurry and get back there. My cart is there, full of potatoes, along with my guard, uh, Henry. Uh, you all know Henry. He, he's a local here. He, he's my guard. And uh, I just left. I fled. I'm a coward. And if you'd like to roll an insight, yes, he is a coward. Uh, what was that, Pierre, name? I just asked him, however did you manage to get away? I'm a coward, uh, and so as soon as I heard any ruckus or anything, I, I just I hid behind this, I hid behind that. Uh, I made a bolt uh, at one point in time. I'm not, I'm not proud to say, but uh, I even threw a, a dog. Uh, there was a dog uh, running around, and I threw him at a hobgoblin, uh, and, and and then ran into the woods. And and ran ran all till till finally I arrived here. I'm a coward. Uh, Look I'd over like at the count. Me. Such fine men you have in your employ, sir. I was about uh, to switching that. to my pictures. <laughs> the count will be like really quick. Ah, oh, sure. Uh, a sixteen. Ah. Mm. What are you curious about? Uh, just, it seems like if he were that much, it seems improbable, I guess, to me, that the hobgoblins would have missed him, especially dodging something like a dog. 
don't think that would have stopped okay. them from hounding him down. I was wondering about that too, P and A. Um, you can tell that uh, he wasn't lying about any of that thing, but you can tell that he he did not seem surprised about this story. The story seems I wouldn't say expected, but he's not as shocked like this had possibly been anticipated. Okay. But Kreeman, do you know why these all go up on the tank? Because it kind of seems like you knew they were already coming. It almost did appear that way. But uh, the hobgoblins, you know, they need things. Uh, that's the captives, uh, they've been known to delve into slavery or, or possibly sacrifice. Uh, they, uh, like, corn potatoes. I mean, for the love of God, have you had some of Haven's Meadows potatoes? They're to die for. I can get twice the amount of profit I can for a cartload of Haven's Meadows potatoes than I can from any other potatoes around here. It's the soil. It's bottomland. The, 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 the rain washes off the hillside and all those good nutrients. Is uh, I, I bore you not with the details. But they make the best potatoes. I, I we get it. They were the magic, right? And David was in that point. So did the hobgoblin seem the most interested in the people or in the supplies there? I didn't really stick around to find out. But uh, yeah. I, you know, I ran at first sight of their assault. I don't I'm not one hundred percent sure. Could you tell me from there But it's What? What, Pyrenee? Uh, can you tell how many of them there might have been? Um, I saw about five or six. Uh, I'm not entirely, like, uh, as the good Count Wonderfell stated, the, the people of Heaven's, Haven's Meadow, while, while good folk and good simple farmers are not fighters, uh, possibly they could have slain one or two in defense, but it's not likely. There's probably four or five still there. Uh, Haven's Meadows is a very small town, maybe, maybe 25, 30 folk who live there, uh, you know, plus some kids. You know, so maybe total numbers 50, but I don't think the uh, elementary uh, age of, of fighting uh, since. Hopefully some of them made it out too. I don't know. And they be wandering lost in the wood for all I know. Can you give us directions? Hmm? Can you give us directions to where your cop used your cop was? I think so. I think uh, this seems a good place to start our search. I can do even better. I'll take you there. You'd be willing to go back after such a harrowing experience, considering the hop goblins may still be there. Tyranny is right. You might soil your breeches once again. <laughs> Love that. Should straight up do job over that. Well, uh, with if according to Count Wonderfell, you all are, are so uh, uh, powerful, so legendary, so brave and true. Uh, surely I am safe with you. But uh, it is imperative, imperative that I get my cart and the potatoes and uh, find my uh, good uh, guardsman that I hired, uh, whose name I've already forgotten. Henry, I believe. Henry, thank you. Thank you so very much for that. Uh, yes, I must uh, find Henry, my good guardsman I hired. It's imperative oh. that I find him. But what happened if we did find Henry, but it's too late? Oh, oh, Lathander forbid it. That that would just be so. Oh my God, that would be so horrible. You know the wear guild I would have to pay to his family. I mean the rates they're charging for good guards these days anyway. And then if one dies, oh my God, I have to pay ten times that rate to their families. How are you going to pay them? Well, he's going well, to apparently pay. with. Well, apparently I won't unless I can get back there and get my cart full of potatoes and sell at market. God forbid the 
horrible hobgoblin said time is imperative. Can you tell I promise just delivering. What type of weapons do you use? Mm. Big swords, uh, as, as big as I am. Uh, he's average size, dude. Uh, so, you know, 5'8", five, 5'10", five, somewhere around there. Really big swords. Uh, very well covered in arm. Um, I'm, I'm not exactly a military man, but it's uh, kind of like, you know, point over to a guard over there. Uh, splint. Kind of like his over there, splint male. Mm. And um, I believe that they had some crossbows and such like that associated with them, but primarily they just walking around whacking people. And, you know, like it was dark. I was leaving. I don't have eyes in the back of my head. My eyes were facing this way towards the woods and safety. Um, I think the rest of the party agree then that we should maybe start heading out towards this car and let's go and see what we can find. Everyone in agreement? I'm sorry, what I can't hear you. Um, I'm just saying I think we should all maybe start heading out to the cart and see if uh, we can find anything there, any more clues or maybe any lingering hobgoblins that um, I told them when I saw them. I think that's a good idea. I think so, and hope to see if Henry is still alive. Yes. Moment. And I, and I don't think that we necessarily need the surf services of our good bishop. If you no. recall, I have been to this little omelet in my travels. We did go and gather some needs for the college in the past. Out of character, yeah. I would think that if we're from around this area, we're familiar with it. Yes, you, you all are familiar with it. Unless but, uh, he's a key component here. Uh he is quite insistent upon going with you to uh, acquire his cart again and also for the safety of his uh, hiring, potatoes. his guard. Uh, oh, um, and his I, potatoes. I thought, <laughs> I thought you would say potatoes at first. Uh, yeah, his, his potatoes, his guardsman. Henry. So be it. Yes. Let us Let us prepare and be off. All right. Okay. It is already about noon, and the sun is high into the sky, sweltering down upon you. It is an unusually warm day, considering that it is late fall already for the potatoes. Indian summer, if you would. However, this is the Kingdom of Westmark, and there are no Indians. So, as you travel around, the, the sun begins to climb into later afternoon. It does take you a couple hours to get there. As you're traveling upon the main road into back towards the capital in Misthaven and some of the major cities of the Kingdom of Westmark. You'll come to a sign, uh, a signpost on the wall, on the uh, trail, and uh, various arrows pointing in various directions, all stating Misthaven, the capital, uh, Dwarf Lands, King Lorak, the Elf King. But one at the very bottom says Haven's Meadow and points to the right of it. And this is not really a trail so much as a small little ox cart. Uh, a wagon could make it through here, but it is not a very well-traveled uh, trail at all. And the green canopy of the trees covers over it thoroughly. And uh, as you all are familiar with, since you all are of this area, it is not unknown to you. This is not metal. It's just a small little village outside of the main uh, keep of uh, Count Wonderfell. And while it's uh, outside of the protection of the keep, the soil there is known as such great for the potatoes. The potatoes are legendary across this land. And so that's probably lived so far from the keep in the protection of Count Wonderfell. But as you go and then you and you're shortly about to enter the keep uh, well, not to keep Haven's Metal. Is there anything you all would like to do in preparation for entering the town proper? It's just, uh, it is familiar. Uh, and Bishop, the merchant, will let you know, it's just past these cosmic trees over here. What, uh, I know we have a bard and a fighter. What is, uh, what is our class? It's a bard, um, 
yourself and two barbarians actually. Okay. Kevin, that was also a barbarian as well for myself. Maybe we should do a circuit around the town before we enter, just to see if we can pick up any clues. Um, that our barbarian friends might be familiar with uh, foot patterns and the like. Yep. Uh -huh. um, I don't have anything in like tracking or anything like that, but I do have a. This is just our character. I do have a plus five a stealth modifier, so I'm pretty sneaky. Just so you can remember. Okay. Uh, go uh, ahead and uh, give, would anybody like to accompany the young gnome? I'll go with him and take my crossbow out. Um, okay. Uh, I'll take my javelin out as well. I'll cut a couple of javelins, so I'll take my javelin out in preparation. Um, okay. Can I also uh, do that? Can I do this stealthily? Um, Katie, do you want to do this stealthily and sneak around just to try and avoid anyone? Uh, both of y'all give me a stealth check real quick. Let me look at your passive perceptions. Okay, okay so best, I'm... Uh, my perceptive I, people in the group. Okay, <laughs> what do I need to look for? I just crash. Oh, so okay. Um, at the moment, your gnomish barbarian friend and the bard Pyrenee are going to take a look around the outskirts of the village before you all enter. Don't and, tell me. Uh, he... Both your passive perception. Uh, my okay. passive perception is fourteen. My passive perception. Yeah, is yeah. Fourteen. This fourteen also. It, yes, the two most perceptive people in the group. Uh, go ahead, both of you. Give me a stealth check, if you would, please, just to determine yeah. if anybody knows you. I rolled an eighteen for stealth. I, I don't see you at all. I rolled a one. You rolled one. Everybody sees you. Just FYI, as a gnomish barbarian is sitting there trying to blend into some shadows behind a tree stump and such like that, he does so uh, like squatting down, but his butt sticking out the side or something, or he's dragging his uh, axe or warhammer or something, just making this huge trail through there that you all can easily follow if you decide to. But I'm just sitting there, there on my is... horse, and I look over at uh, Bishop and uh, Zertan, and I oh, you're on. take out an apple as horse. I bite into it, and I say, uh, we're not on horseback. Okay. I, well, I'm standing there then with them, and I say, Pyrene might as well be banging her drum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is, however, nothing really to see you, so the one stealth roll is not a big deal. Uh, but uh, your old passive perception is pretty decent. As you're walking around on the ed skirts of the town, you can see periodically a dead child uh, here and there, a, a, a woman who was running out but was slaughtered anyway and drugged back in. You can also detect footprints of, of large, large, bigger than a human, uh, very like a big metallic, <laughs> like a... Uh, Iron shod foot prints here and there, and as you peep and gain a little more trust into looking into the village, because you see no other signs of actual life or anything, this right here is this picture is pretty much what you see before you: bodies strewn here and there around the town square, uh, bits of blood it just pools, pulled a bitty blood that drops here and there. And in a far corner by the fountain is a wagon overturned with a cartload of potatoes just thrown about. Okay. What do you do? Um, can we... Uh, can, can, I I observe, can I observe it? Like, look, at, look into it? Uh, you can. Just give them a moment. They'll come back and tell you without a problem. Okay. I think we should head back and tell our travel companions what we've seen. Yeah, um, see, so just before we do, is there anything that's obviously apparent about the way that these uh, good times will work out? Mm -hmm. Other than maybe just the old hack and um, uh, Give me a... Do you have any arcana or anything? I mean, you want to investigate? I mean, just yeah. from outside of the town looking in... You, Kind of hard to determine really what's going on. Um, just, just anything, just really. Um, 
Yeah, uh, if we're not in the town proper, then I think I'll just wait until we're actually in the town proper before we'll I start having a wee mosey. So I'm with Katie, we'll just go back to the group and tell them what we saw. So they come back and they uh, describe this scene to y'all, and y'all may discuss how to proceed from here. Y'all. I love saying y'all. <laughs> well, beyond the fact of the uh, uh, the dead bodies, we're, it's pretty much deadly silent, except maybe for the sounds of the, the maybe birds in the flies trees buzzing. or something. Yeah. Well, yeah, flies buzzing. It hasn't been that long. So. Okay. But like, you know, maggots have to start going. It's a fresh kill. Hey, Which as soon as y'all enter. I think we should look for survivors. Yeah, I say we cautiously move forward at a determined pace, but very alert as we enter the town and fan out within five to ten feet of each other so that we can be close to each other, but if necessary, but we can get a better look. What do you think? Uh, I, I agree, though uh, I'm going to try and sneak off and hide just that way so it looks like there's one less our group, so if we do get attacked, I can kind of just go, you know, which style is a big swap. Onward, shall we go then? Yeah, I agree. Onward. Oh. Of, of course we should, we should go. This is highly imperative. From what you described, that sounds like my cop that's been overturned. And and did you see? Did you see Henry anywhere? Oh my! This is most 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 horrible news. I cannot believe it. Oh oh my! What am I to do? And uh, with that, he'll go running into the village. Oh wow! Great. I say, let him run. <laughs> I, I'm yeah, with Henry. <laughs> I'm a PNA too. Um, <laughs> There's a liability at this point. Mm-hmm. I I feel I'm one because you know what well, potatoes are not as valuable as people. Sorry, I'm just I'm questionable about my um um about my alignment. Uh, what is your alignment? It's um it doesn't say on the pre-made one, but I'm wanting it to be. I'm wanting it to be good, but I'm sort of neutral. So do neutral good? Okay. Yeah. Just, just play it however you want to. And it, don't necessarily concern yourself with alignment, so to speak, as much as personality. Uh, mm -hmm. Just try to think of what, what this guy's personality would be like. Is he an asshole? Is he a smart aleck? Is he just a nice guy? Is he a cheerleader? You know? And just you know, play him along those lines. Yeah. I don't try to get too caught up in alignment anymore as much as just try to think of, oh, what's this guy like? And sometimes they do good things, sometimes they do bad things. Just because somebody does something evil doesn't mean they're an evil guy. And just because they do something good doesn't mean they're a good guy either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's all it. good, man. Uh, think of it, see the way that like, my character, my character is all about trying to pick like, the biggest guy possible. But he's got chip on his shoulder because he's so small. Think about that. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah. Bishop will I run into the middle of the town. What, Pyrenee? I was just going to say, I think as we move forward, we should check buildings individually and all together to make sure that there is, to check for survivors inside, but also to make sure there's not any hobgoblins hiding inside the buildings. Mm -hmm. Wait, there's I'll only a few idea. scattered houses here and there. There's only a few scattered houses here and there. Uh, there's also a uh, town square. Uh, well, at the town square, there's also a uh, larger building that would be their general store. Also, where they, since this is a very small village, their general store also doubles as a post office slash meeting house for. Various and sundry uh, political going on. There's also a small little church of Lysander. Uh, Lysander is the pretty much Lysander of Westmark. Good light life. Yada yada yada. Boring guy. 
Can I investigate the town hall then? You may. Uh, as you uh, enter the town hall, uh, you'll find a couple of the bodies are uh, actually have arms, which is something that's very uncommon in this area. You will notice that most of these people lying around dead do not have any weapons or armor at all. But here in the town hall, you will see a few of them with a spiked clubs and one with a pitchfork. And behind them is most of the town's children and women in the meeting hall. And they have also been slain and torn apart and ripped. And, and with little droplets of blood hither and thither. Not, not as much as you would expect from this site, though, which is very odd. That is there's odd. Also, a, there's also a general store, so there's also grain, uh, flour, barley, beer... Uh, you know, ropes, various sundry farming implements, uh, things you would generally associate with a small country store. That if anybody would like to pick up a flask of oil or a torch or so, they have those too. And yeah. apparently, the store proprietor doesn't need well, them. Well, I just don't need to worry about torches. I have ten of them with me. Okay. Gum, gum and it is still milk. bright daylight. Gimbal wanders over to some of the beer and he takes one and he just sort of takes a flash for it, fills off and then just starts drinking. Um, and when the rest of the group look at him, he's just like, oh. Drinking in a room full of massacred children. Hmm. <laughs> I, uh, I would like to take a look around and uh, as you mentioned I noticed there wasn't as much blood as I would have anticipated for the scene before me so I'd like to kind of investigate that and see if I can determine anything odd about it At... All right, give me an investigation roll okay <laughs> out of 14 the number of the day uh, you can s I can tell you what you get from your investigation is you notice that most of the dead bodies not only have wounds caused from uh, sword blows, uh, something you would normally see in any... You all are fourth level. You have seen your fair share of combat in battlefields and such like that. Uh, not only do they have sword blows and such like that, but they also seem to have these gashing wounds. Uh, not exactly the telltale two puncture marks of a vampire, but just a large gash, say, in the side of their neck or even at their uh, around their upper thigh where the vein comes through down to your leg. But in very sundry places, a large gash ripped open. And there you can see most of the blood drops would be, as if something had been feasting upon them. Can I make a... Uh religion check to see if there's anything I recall of a religion that might be f use this type of incision? Uh, sure. Okay. Total of a 15. A blood sacrifice is about as common as anything in uh, okay. especially evil uh, sacrifice evil uh, with bugbears I mean sorry bugbears with hobgoblins in particular 15 is a pretty decent roll I will give you that you've heard of some ritual they have for the growth of a uh, a beast of theirs a, a blood reaver it feeds upon the, the blood of death and that uh, needs a lot of it, and, and it's possible what they could have been doing. You're not familiar with the Blood Reaver beast at all, other than that's, other than you've heard that that it would be a ritual hobgoblin blood uh, sacrifice. Ooh, Just very you interesting. I dropped a call right as you were telling me what I saw. I'm assuming I saw an incision and that the blood had been drained. Is that what happened? Um, pretty much. Um. And then from there, it was kind of the blood's been drained, and Dave has made a uh, religion check to see if he knows anything about blood draining okay. and the same type. And blood bees. Got it. Okay. Um, if if uh, this information has been relayed to us, Gimbal would like to know just how big are these blood bees? Uh. 
Actually, Luke oh. actually seems kind of excited, not at the sight of the blood and gore and what have you, but the excitement is learning a possibility of learning about a new creature. You might not pick this up at first, you know, kind of grotesque, but he kind of gets excited and animated as he's talking about it. But you notice that he slows down and speeds up at different paces. If he's looking at you directly, he's speaking slowly because he's thinking that he needs you to understand what he's saying. He has to speak slow to you. So, <laughs> but so what? What size do I know? What size a blood reaver would be, Michael? Uh, from what you can recollect about them, since you've never encountered them, they're almost like creatures of myth and legend. Okay. Large, large, you know, teeth, fangs. I'm sorry, <laughs> moving my fingers around like a Monty Python. Look at the fangs! But y'all yeah, get the point. Uh, it's a uh, just a mythological beast. Go with the library. I might. I know something about it. Sure, give me an Arcana check. Or religion, your choice. We'll go with Arcana. Now, 12. 12. Mm -hmm. Yeah, large creatures. Um, Are you talking through this verbally as uh, you're recalling it, Kirani? Uh, yes, I would be reading, okay. hmm, blood sacrifice, let's see, I think I read something about that once. Can I reinforce that with an arcana roll myself? Bang. Sure. Bangs. Okay. Bangs. <laughs> and I got lower than she did. <laughs> so I, I play it off. Wow. Just, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, I, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Apparently, something's... Okay. Um, uh, as you go. Wait, can I do can I do an arcana check to off on those? Mm, you can. Um, sure. You're a barbarian, right? Yeah, barbarian. Half barbarian, half dwarf. Okay. What die do <laughs> I need? Dwarf is your race. A dwarf oh, yeah. is your race, sir. Uh, your class barbarian. You're a dwarven barbarian instead of a human yeah. barbarian. What what dice is that? D twenty. Uh, you would roll a D twenty and add your intelligence modifier to it. Okay. Both our barbarians came up short. But it's yeah. <laughs> I got a tw I got a twenty plus. Let me look at my thing. I got a twenty period. So whatever I got, I what does that mean? 20 is the highest thing you can get, especially without an intelligence modifier. So your barbarian is like, oh, yeah. Uh, I know uh, Blood Reavers. They're uh, big, almost 9 feet tall, scaly, chitinous armor, uh, almost like a very tall playing mantis, and they uh, lop up blood and grow bigger quite quickly. They're, they're ferocious little boogers. They uh, lay their eggs in uh, people and... Uh, they burst force. They, they they incubate in there and eat their their heart and such, and then burst force from there and you know rampage and such like that. Drink blood, get bigger. Rawr. Hobgoblins revere them. Nat twenty blood revere. Nice. So at this point, I'm actually I've broken out a, a you know a quill and I'm actually taking notes and kind of taking a quick sketch of the and and what. Um, Zartan is sharing and what we're all kind of putting together here. I can't believe a barbarian <laughs> saved the day. <laughs> and and just a question for the barbarian who knows all about these. Did you say that they have a, a chitinous armor? They don't wear any actual armor? That's correct. Uh, yeah. yeah. Beasts. Beasts. No real intelligence, so to Beasts. speak. They're, they're vicious, though. Okay. But they're, they're not smart. They don't wear armor. They just big, scaly, not chitin though, not scales, but big armored teeth. <laughs> Razor sharp limbs. 
So as you all exit the uh, meeting hall, you will see Bishop leaning over his cart that's been overturned with potatoes and kind of sitting in the potatoes as if as if this uh, were under the potatoes and then as the cart was overturned, it's uh, the potatoes falling over to the side has now revealed the body oh, of a man. Henry. Oh, we found Henry. He's dead. It, it is Henry. Uh, as I mentioned before, Henry is a local for uh, Count Wonderfell. He's a cell sword of some renown and skill. But unlike the other uh, victims here, who, he doesn't really have any sword marks or wounds, but his ribs have all been outward pulled as if something has either forced, burst forth from him or have been pulled outwards. And uh, anybody like to inspect the body a little thoroughly? I do. Um, right, uh, just give me a medicine check, and I'm assuming you can go ahead with advantage since everybody is now like, oh my god, especially with that nat 20 roll by the barbarian. Uh, Zoltan, <laughs> you know what to look for. Yeah, okay, another another D20. Two, two D20, and you've packed the highest talent because you have advantage on it. Uh, what do I need to add to that? My dexterity? Nope, your wisdom. Your wisdom modifier. Wisdom. Ah, uh, my wisdom. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me look at that first. So remember, roll a face and take the highest one. Okay, wallet twice and bid the highest one. Yeah. Okay. Plus four. Okay. D20. Uh, not a D12. D20. D20. Okay. Done that a few times. Uh, Y'all going to really like me now. I just did another, another 20. Twice, too. You got some lucky dice. Yeah. I did 20 twice. Are you rolling an uh, actual uh, dice? No thunder generator. Uh, I got this dice roller on my phone. Hmm. Okay. I don't have no dice. I, I use uh, someone. I someone stole my dice. I brought this group home. I'm at. And so, uh, anyway, uh, it's pretty obvious, though, what you can tell is that there is no heart, there is no lungs, uh, where there should be stuff like that. There is none, not to mention that the corpse is almost desiccated. There is any, not only blood, but any other fluid associated with the corpse. So there's and no heart, no lungs? A little longer. Yes dead for a little longer than these other folks, but he still seems as fresh as if he were walking around. That's just creepy. That is That's fascinating, creepy. young man. How is that fascinating? <laughs> as he's standing there with his book and his quill writing it down. Truly fascinating. Dude, you need to get your brain jet. Oh, my brain is intact. I'm like Henry's here. Oh, uh, he's he's weeping. He's like, oh, Bishop will be like, oh, oh no, that's so horrible. This is so horrible. I can't believe, I can't believe they found this and then they they took. Oh my God! Oh, we've got to run. We've got to flee. Flee! I tell you, flee. It's not safe here anymore. Um, I'm going to smack him with the flat side of my axe and say, Gag yeah, that man, come on. Ow, ow, uh, uh, Okay, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. <sighs> now fuck that man, we gotta flee, dude, we gotta run. You have no idea what was in him. Um, excuse me, uh, may I borrow that, um... Uh, book that you writing in, um, um, uh, uh, Mark, dude. Luke. Luke, is the one writing you. in the book. Yeah, no, thank my, you. my journal is for myself. Oh, uh, I want to smack some sense into this little bishop guy. 
I'm sure that your meaty paws would be able to accommodate that for you. I don't want to kill them. <laughs> Can I make a perception check while he's flipping out here and kind of looking around to see if he's drawn any attention? Oh, yeah. Uh, Can I? Sure. I forgot about that. Uh, you can, uh, but I was wondering why it was so quiet. What did you get, Luke? I got a seven total. I'm not very perceptive. I'm very intent upon what I'm writing in my book. <laughs> can I? Yeah. Can I do a perception check? Sure. What number? D twenty. D twenty again. D20 again, and you're adding your wisdom modifier. Wisdom modifier? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm quite perceptive, but right now all my perceptions are on smashing this. Um, Since you have a, a 12 pass perception, I'm going to be plus 2. Yeah. D20 plus 2. Was he? D the 12 is only plus 1. Plus 1. Okay. D20. I got a 19, so all together it's a 20. Uh, well, I mean, just looking around uh, as uh, Bishop is freaking out, uh, it's, the, the strangest thing is you really don't see anything extra. There, there doesn't appear to be anything going on. It doesn't seem to be drawing any attention. Um, uh, because besides you all. And that's in itself is a sad thing. There's nothing to be drawn towards it freaking out. Can I? Can I? I'm gonna start rummaging through the car, see if I can see anything, anything obvious close to maybe where the thing that pops out of your chest maybe it's gone or kind of ran through or anything like that. Um, All right. Open up the one PDF file. Uh, Eleven. Uh, maybe you can't really tell much at all from that look. Gonna do an investigation check. Sure. What are you wanting to investigate? Um, if there's like maybe pieces of armor or whatever on the ground that I see from the hobgoblins. No, no, there, there are no uh, leftover pieces of the hobgoblin armor, but uh, anyone can easily, uh, just looking around, you can tell the footprints of the uh, hobgoblins. They're uh, very different from anybody else associated with here because, as you've often been told, these folks were not soldiers. You have not found one person, one human, this is a human village, just FYI, of any arms or armors of any note. A uh, few spiked clubs and pitchforks were the only arms, but no armor whatsoever. So the hobgoblin footprints were their iron shod, uh, large, quite large, uh, larger than any man, uh, you know, like Shaquille O'Neal style iron footprints. You can easily follow those around as you can see them running hither and thither. They always seem to stay together quite well. A very disciplined military style precision. But you can also easily determine where they came from and where they left. There is a quite easy path to follow. But Bishop is going to, uh, he's going to, as you all are looking for this path, he's going to be like, you know, are you all really that talented and legendary? Do, do you think you could still slay these hobgoblins and, and capture the Blood Reaver? I'm just going to stare at him like, I can't believe you just asked that. It's <laughs> because you have no idea how much that thing's worth. Was he By the way, around when you were talking about the Blood Reaver in the building? No. He was what? inspecting Henry and his cart. Tell me, Bishop, how did you know what kind of creature we'd encounter if we followed those tracks? Well, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I, I travel around all over the place. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a learned man. I'm not some local bumpkin. I, um, I, 
Ah, fuck it, okay? I was transporting. And we got a job to go to the up to the western hinterlands, uh, this uh, one particular hill where we... And then we were assaulted by a blood reaver, and in so doing, my guard, Henry, was infected. Uh, I have a little skill. I managed to... Uh, keep his corpse from rotting uh, via some magic I know and I was transporting him into the interior where I know a lord who will pay a fetching penny for the egg of a blood reaver but uh, the hobgoblins must have tracked us down and well they released it mm. um, see well he's saying that Gamble would like to Gamble would like to and I can make you all there I can make y'all very rich if you play ball with me. I'm going to start weaving a fire between my fingers, and I'm just looking at him very intensely, and I'm just going to say, truth is a very tricky thing. And once you have lost trust, it is very difficult to regain said trust. I think right now all you are to us is information. And once that information is gone, I don't think your usefulness is, well, necessary anymore. Can I roll an intimidate with that? Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, go ahead with advantage, too. I like it. I was uh, I like immediately <laughs> starting to wonder about what new plan Bishop was going to go for because he was about to just drop that idea. Okay. I can't believe he did that. And the re and the reverberation in your voice when you're talking, uh, whatever the <laughs> technical issue is, freaking works with that quite well, dude. I, mean, tell <laughs> you, I was like, wow. So Damn. I got a total of fourteen. Can I uh, can I assist by casting a minor illusion to make him appear to swell in size? And be really ah, sure. Uh, I like that. Uh, I'm no conjurer of cheap tricks type thing. Yeah. <laughs> um. So that would be intimidation, right? So seventeen. Or did I just? Uh, how would I? I was going to say you can add her charisma modifier to, to your roll, where you roll it with advantage. Add her charisma modifier also, because oh, you're you know, she really, yeah, she really knows that. Which would put it in eighteen. Let me tell you, he is. He's like, okay, okay, okay. He's intimidated. Okay, I, I, you, I, you all are very powerful people, and uh, I get it. I. Uh, yeah, what do you need to know, and uh, what do you need from me? Everything that you need me. to know. Well, I, I pretty much told you pretty much what happened. Uh, is there anything specific I may have left out that you were curious about? Where were but, you originally? Uh, I'm a blood reaver. Uh, well, uh, up in the Grey Mist Mountains, uh, Crag Maw Keep. I don't know. I can't really think of a name off the top of my head. But yeah, up there, the Red Skull. Red Skull. Red Skull Mountain. Uh, the Red Skull Tribes of the Hobgoblins. That's where we were told to go search for one. And uh, we were assaulted. And uh, my uh, guard, Henry, was infected. It's out west. It's uh, about a... Two week uh, ride hence. Is it the same direction as the footprints? Yeah, yeah. The footprints do head off west. Uh, yeah, it's that that way. But at the same time, uh, a blood reaver is is at this age and it's quite young. Uh, it needs to feed almost constantly. They they wouldn't risk taking it on a two week journey at the moment. It still needs to be trained. It's, a, it's just a beast. Well, I'm taking it far at the moment. Well, I say we go and follow these tracks and we go and show it to that walk. Huh? 
Okay. And if, if anyone else got any other ideas, I say we follow the track. Follow the tracks. Is there anything we can do to help prepare for fighting something like that? Since we have a barbarian that seems to know all about them. Um, it's a beast. So tactics and such like that really don't come into play much. Okay. Uh, he's just going to leap and assault whatever's nearest the Blood Reaver. Okay. Uh, now the hobgoblins, on the other hand, if there's several hobgoblins with them, uh, they will fight to protect the Blood Reaver. It's sacred to them, a sacred creature to them. While it is still young and not fully matured yet, uh, they will defend it probably before you even get to the Blood Reaver. Uh, they'll have the Blood Reaver feeding at the moment, and the Blood Reaver will pretty much feed until he is otherwise, you know, something keeps him from right. feeding or gets his attention away from feeding. Gotcha. It is a beast. Uh, it's not necessarily like, you know, it's, it's got good armor. So anything maybe with a saving throw instead of the armor class would be advantageous. Uh, it's a whirling death that leaps at its prey and slices into it with its great razor sharp. I want, don't want to call them claws, but uh, like legs, you know, like and uh, it's got big bangs and it just slices and dices and mops the blood up. Now the hobgoblins on the other hand are hobgoblins, you know, they are quite, quite armed fierce warriors. Um, yeah, I, I, I say we follow the track and um, I'm also going to make the suggestion that I sneak out in front as well, uh, stealthily see if I can maybe spot anything. If I have anyone else has got any other ideas. Does anyone have any rope? I do. Okay. Yep, I've got 50 foot of that. I got like yeah. uh, 10 feet or something like that. That should work. I'm going to, if you wouldn't mind, Zertan, I, may I? Yeah, sure. And I take it, and he ex explained how he was a, Bishop was a spellcaster of sorts. So what I do is, is I proceed to start by wrapping the wrists, but then I also loop it over the hands oh, behind his back, and oh, I piece tie no, no. his he, hands. He will not allow that. He will not allow that. He, he will, if you come by him and start to, he'll resist, he'll run, he'll, yeah, he ain't going to be tied up willingly. Hmm. So, uh, so I, was, I, I use message to my hand rips, and I, I okay. turn to Lucius and I whisper, uh, are we going to take him with the, take us with him, uh, as sort of collateral, I guess. As I see him, like, borrowing rope. <laughs> yeah, I refer back with another message that says my intent is to turn him in when we're done. And scratch that, I have 50 feet. Uh, there's um, also plenty of rope in the general store if you all require more. 10, 10 feet should be suffice for tying them up. Uh, I'm going to make, see if he's not going to go well on there, I'm going to make a grapple check then and try and grab him. Okay, no, okay, no, okay, okay. Go ahead and uh, give me a, an athletics check. Okay. Wait, oh, uh, for uh, Scott. Yeah? Okay. I thought y'all were, were talking to everyone to do that. Oh, sorry, I'll do it. Um, so, athletics check. Natural 20. <laughs> and you grab him, and you put him in a headlock, which is very awkward considering that he is about five eight, five nine, and you're three foot on your heels. I don't know, but yeah, you grappled the crap out of him. <laughs> he has grappled, him. and you may now tie him up without any further difficulty, other than his whining. And uh, would you like to gag him? Yeah, yeah I think 
in case there's any semantic component or verbal components. But also with his hands behind his back, and basically I'm wrapping it through to avoid any hand gestures for spell casting. And then also once hey. around his his. I swear. You know, <laughs> well, he You'll doesn't. Pay for this. Too many words. I am a wealthy, powerful man. Let me go back to switch my picture again to him. <laughs> no, no need. I am a wealthy and powerful man. I swear you all will pay for this. Such treatment, such ill treatment. I will not stand for it. I'll, I'll sue. I'll sue. Keep I'll have talking. Count Wonderbell throw you in chains and irons for this. Keep talking. Oh. I've been through much oh, more than what you can wreak on me. You shall rule the day. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Is he gagged now? Yep, yeah, he, he gagged. And, um, and if no one's got any objections, um, with our package in tow, I think we should uh, head out. And follow the least tracks. And I pat, uh, kind of kneel down or bend down a little bit and pat the gnome on the back. Good job, little one. Who do you call it, little job? A grand piece, and he just goes off into a triad of the toss swords and that and that, and there's a few big um, implications about uh, who his mother is and where that hand axe is going to go. He makes an awesome smile off him like that again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just smiling at him, and it's just... And very good, but your, uh, your etiquette is amazing. I don't, even, I don't even know what that word means. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining oh, this, yeah. this really learned elf, you know, trying to communicate <laughs> with this barbarian from the wilds. Mm. Hilarious. Yeah. Um, so with, with that, um, Captain Bo's going to kind of stalk off ahead in a, in a wee half, and he's going to kind of stealthily just go ahead to the party. And there is much to stay away from the wild elf as it is to go ahead. <laughs> he's an angry, angry one. An angry Ooh, little fella, angry is he? Little um, yes, he is. And but he's self check for going ahead and get an 18. All right, that's pretty decent. Yeah, but he's got a your, uh, yourself, thankfully. As you're tromping along in a huff, quite stealthily, though, the path is quite easy to follow. And it's only about 20 minutes or so before it's, the path leads through the trees. But then the tree line breaks, and you can see just through some, uh, just through uh, some branches and such like that overhanging, this small little keep that's more than a wall anymore. And this is, uh, you can see just flitting here and there behind those windows and this ruined wall of a keep. Uh, figures, silhouettes of a hobgoblin here and there, a uh, large, heavily armed and armored. Their splint mail is rustic and blood-stained. Their skin is a greenish color, and they have giant uh, great swords, pretty much strung to their backs. And they're pretty much just uh, looking uh, the opposite direction from where you're standing. And if you give me a perception check high enough, I'll tell you what they're staring at. But which one, Scott? Which one, Scott? Uh, yes. Give right, them all the time. With that, kind of broke down now. Um, with quite a perception. Uh, there's a abandoned uh, ruin of a keep. Pretty much only the wall there um, with some holes in it. And through those happened? holes, you can see. Thirteen. Thirteen? Thirteen. Um, besides the, the scene, you can't really tell what they're staring at. But there are some hobgoblins on the other side. And this wall is across a clearing, uh, a little uphill. Uh, for example, this once used to be a keep many, many hundred years ago. And the land has been cleared. 
and it has been kept clear. So there's just small grass how many, about a hundred feet. How many old goblins can I see in total? Uh, you can see probably about four, so just on the other side of that. Four. Four. Just four. on the other side of that wall, which is about a hundred feet from the tree line. Okay. Um, Across clear glass. I'm going to try and sneak and uh, see if I can get. Is there any of them that kind of standing by themselves that I could maybe like, shank and like assassin could still with my dagger? Yeah. Um, I, no, no, I'm not going to do, do that at all. I'm going to head back to the group and tell the group. Okay. Uh, you're breaking up a lot. I'm having difficulty here, and it's just like. Gravel. Yeah, I've been having trouble here the whole time. Oh, well. But the, about a round later, since he was sneaking up a. He'll probably just reload or something. Um, so he's got yeah, it. Sounded like, the rest of you. It sounded like what he was. He thought about possibly trying to go up and kill one or two of them if he could, and then thought better of it and decided to come back and share it with us. All right, you all would show up like a round later after he saw that he was just scouting a little ahead. Okay. And here we go. Right, now, how's your uh, connection? It didn't do a I just closed it and reopened it, so that seems to have done the trick. Oh, it's a lot better now. Yeah, that's much yeah, better. I don't know awesome. the, I don't know what it was. It was just... The, the name, but I've closed it, opened it again. That seems to have done the trick, so... Happy to okay. Okay. So, yeah, I'm going to head back to the group. I'm going to relay um, what I saw. Um, it would be kind of helpful if... Um, you could maybe repeat what I saw... <laughs> Um, so it wasn't really taxing too much. Yet. Okay. Uh, did everybody else get the description of the uh, keep or the ruins of the keep? It's just pretty much a wall anymore. About a hundred yards of cleared cut uh, grass between the forest line and this keep uh, mm -hmm. ruins. Uh, there's about four hobgoblins on the other side of this wall, which the holes, windows in that wall are, are quite large and big. They offer pretty much no cover whatsoever. Uh, they can easily be transfers. The wall isn't going to keep anybody from going through it or around it or anything. It's just there. But it does offer some semblance of protection from the elements and such. A, but they all appear to be looking at something else over to the side. And if uh, any one of you all others would like to sneak up a little closer and roll a perception check, maybe you could tell what they're looking at on the other side of that wall. It's a little ways off in the wall. Probably uh, Gimbal, because he's stealthy. Yeah, yeah um, I'm quite happy to do that. I will continue to sneak um, this far path, and uh, if you want, I'll give your perception. Just give me a second. Uh, 19 plus four, 23. I'm still here. I'm just uh, AFK for a moment. Yep, no worries, Tom. Okay. Okie dokie. Uh, was that a 23 perception or stealth? Uh, well, what we was able to do first, if it's stealth, it's 24. Okay. Well, you can easily sneak up. How far would you like to sneak up to the wall? I'd like to sneak up as close as I can um, so I can get as best of you as I can and see what they're looking at. Okay. All right, well, with that high of a stealth check, you're going to be able to get as close as you want until you actually do see about 30 feet away from the wall. You can tell that on the other side, there's an old-style gallows. And on those gallows, they have several, uh, apparently, villagers, humans, strung up like deer with their throat sloshed, uh, blood just dripping, dripping, dripping into um, a trough. And at the edge of the trough, Looking as a giant praying mantis, red praying mantis looking type thing. I got this nice, uh, well, actually, it's kind of a crappy picture of it. But it is uh, slurping up through a, a long proboscis type, slurping the blood up from the trough. And it's quite large at this point in time now. 
It's got vorpal fangs. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the bones. <laughs> <laughs> Mind Python reference, anybody? No. no. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Imagine the little white bunny jumping across the <laughs> meadow. <laughs> we had a night to say me. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, oh god, she watched my game The Witch of Waco. That's all they did the entire time was quote. Is it a witch? Burner, burner! He turned me into a frog. I got better. Oh, the whole time. That's all we did. It was awesome. Anyway, uh, yeah. what would you like to do now, Gimbal? You have de um, determined the scene behind there. You have spotted the Blood Reaver. You've seen the Hobgoblins. You are 30 feet away from the Hobgoblins, but I also might remind you your friends are about 70 feet back at the tree line. Cautiously yeah. looking at you, going. Oh. Yeah, Pyrene. Can I still see him? Yeah, you can see. Well, actually, no, you can't. He's super s sneaky. You, you saw him start to leave, and then where he's so small, and the grass isn't exactly large, but it's it's enough to cover up his tiny little gnomish self as he slithered up there like a snake. Maybe every once in a while you can see some grass move. Was that him moving through there? Was it a hedgehog? I don't know. He's good. Is it reasonable to assume I would know the general direction so I could send a message forth and ask him what he sees? It's a whisper sure. that only allow he can it. hear and only I can hear. Yeah, I'll allow it. So I ask him, yeah. what do you see? What do you know I see? I, I, I see there's four hobbies, uh, and then there's a big bastard in hang that's drinking blood, and by the way, that hang is mine. There's four hobbies, and there's, uh, there's people in the gallows, and there's blood draining. Oh, it's, it's horrendous, it's horrendous. It would be stupid as to let something do that. I mean, come on. Where's that pride? Where's that fight in them? So I, I turn to everyone else and kind of relay the scene that he's he has seen and then whisper back to him or message back to him what are you going to do? Hey, I'm going to get up behind. Is there a hobgoblin out of the four that is particularly bigger than the rest? Sure. Sure, okay. I'm going to get up behind the yes, biggest one. Yes, one of them. One of them, okay. Uh, I'm I'm going to get up behind the biggest one, and it's even used to create a lovely distraction for me. I'm going to show him what's what. Right, so I I have... back, but you want me to create a distraction for you? Yeah, yeah create, create a distraction, fight, scare them, thing way. Uh, it's up to you, whatever you want to do. I've um, got uh, a spell that I can reach up to 120 feet. Scorching yeah, Rain. Just a horrible picture of the Blood Reaver right now. And if I threw a, those three Scorching uh, Rays at it, they would definitely get their attention. Yeah, probably would. They'd three probably hop over and try to run to them. So I, I messaged back to him, do you want us to make the distraction in front of what they're looking at or behind where you are at? Can we can we make it just to the side of me so that when they all go to investigate, I can get up behind them, but their eyes are taken away from the big thing. I message back, yeah, watch for a bright ray. And then I turn to Lucius and say he wants it just to the side of him, so when they come around the corner to investigate, he can kind of jump out at him. Hmm. Mark just blast them. Opportunity attack because they're running by, not seeing you. So, well, I, I could just throw okay. a firebolt because the firebolt also has it 120 feet, and that way it's just wasting a cantrip to get their attention. Yeah, I would just, I would just, throw, I just throw and then as soon as they come out to to see what's going on, I can even put them to sleep. Ha ha ha! So, oh, well, I can, I can attempt to put them to sleep. Try. Right. All right. So All right. I step up and say, 
fire in my hands. And you see him just start weaving this this fire in between his hands, and then he starts, he rears back, and he throws this bolt of, of fire, and it uh, shoots forth and cracks the wall. Do you want me to roll to hit that wall? Uh, no, if you're aiming at a wall, you hit the wall. Okay, because I'm just <laughs> hitting right next be... to him where he described he wanted us to yeah. hit him. Hit the wall. It, that it is. might not be a very solid wall, and as I told you, it wouldn't be much impediment for you all traversing through it because of all the holes and stuff like that in it, but if you want to hit it, you can hit it. It's uh, not moving. It's not dodging. So you blast uh, a big... <laughs> out of the rock and flame shirts, and you can see every one of them just like immediately everyone just snaps, head snaps over, and uh, can we go ahead and get an initiative roll from everybody? And you always remember ready in action is a possible good action in case somebody moves or something around before you or something along those lines. And Gimbal, what is your initiative roll? And Gimbal with a 10. What is yours, Piran uh, Pirani? Pirane. Oh, did I pronounce that wrong again? Pirane, thank you. 16. Ooh, Pirane with a 16. And Luke. 22. Luke, possibly, probably not going first, though. Voltar. There's no hero. Or Zoltan. Zoltar mm -hmm. still not here? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, let's give him a plus two initiative modifier. You know, he's a barbarian. He probably has a plus two with dex because he's not wearing armor. So uh, I'm rolling at three. That would be a five total for him. <laughs> Is everybody okay with that at the moment? Yep. Yeah. No problem. Yep. Roll that low again. Okay. <laughs> and so that is everybody. <laughs> Okay, as they turn and they look, and you can see them reaching and grabbing at their swords as they're barking at each other. What do you do, Luke? You've just blasted it. And okay, so uh, they're peering. They don't necessarily see you on the tree line, but they know where it came from. Okay, so they haven't necessarily moved forward in feet? Mm, not yet. It's not their turn yet, but they will. Okay, well, I'm going to move forward 10 feet then, and so I'm within the 90-foot range. Outside of the tree line? Yes. Yeah, that'll put you outside the tree line. Okay, and as I'm moving forward, I am doing this elven-like fey dance, and I say, Somnum, you will sleep. And I just throw my hands out and, and blow a mist, and it looks like, Dust goes blowing from my hands as I cast sleep on them. And let me give you the hit point. 5d8. 5d8. Yep. Twenty nine points total. Oh, wow. You will see one of them. Falls to slumber. And he just kind of <laughs> and flops down. And, I, and then I look over at Zoltar, but unfortunately he's checking his boots at the moment. <laughs> okay. And that's my turn. All right. Uh, next will be uh, Pyrene. Do any of them look to be wearing uh, armor, like metal armor? Splint mail. Splint mail. I'm I'm saying splint mail is metal. All right. I don't I don't know. Is it? Yeah. As, as Seems metal. wooden to me, but I yeah, I'm calling and, it. Okay. Splint mail is like see like what samurais wear. It could be wood, but it, it just, the steel is is more probably uh, the preferred. It looks wood to me, but. Yeah, it just looks that way, but I know it has to be steel or iron or some crap. It just looks it. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Then 
one of the, the one that one that didn't fall asleep. I'll um I'll okay. kind of move out. Let's see here. Can I get within sixty feet of them at this point? Um. How far away are they? Uh, technically, they're a hundred feet uh, away from the tree line to the thing. So your movement of thirty would get you seventy feet away from them. Okay. So you're you're just shy a little bit. If you'd like to ready an action to cast it as soon as they get into range, because they will close. Oh yes, yeah. they will close. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna stay in the tree line then. And I'm going to ready an action to cast heat metal on the first one that gets within sixty feet of me. Okay. Uh, anything else? Bonus action or anything? And then... Uh, I think everything I have is just an action. Do you allow cantrips to be bonus actions? Because some people do. Um, only if it states in the spell description that it's a bonus okay. action. Uh, okay. I, I was just wondering, your bardic inspiration and such like that, you could always just, you know, pop somebody a d6. Yeah, uh, okay, so I will um, turn to uh, Lucius and sort of uh, yell out something incredibly encouraging to him about how fantastic uh, his diversion and sleep works and give him a bardic inspiration. Yeah. Hello. Welcome back. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, I was helping preparing dinner. That's okay. Oh, okay. Um, we 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 uh, were Right. Catch um, me up a little bit. Yeah. So you say some of these guys are asleep. Are they all asleep or just some? Oh, no. Not just one. Just just one. Um, yes. the one that's asleep. I'm gonna just come out. I'm gonna bust out of the grass. I'm gonna both my Hand axe is ready, and I'm just going to make an attack with. Uh, oh, wait, we're fighting hobgoblins now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I guess the sleeping one. Yes, yeah, the sleeping one. Yeah, I'm cool. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, you have like advantage, and is it auto crit? I'm not sure. I think, I think if it's sleeping, yeah. Prone. Yeah, auto crit. Yeah, it's definitely prone. You're definitely getting advantage. You're, you're. Mm. Yeah, I think it's auto crit though. Oh, wow. Actually, I'm kind of okay with it after seeing all the, the little townsfolk, you know? Yeah, Yeah, me too. Me too. Auto definitely crit. rolling with advantage, and I'm allowing auto crit. Yeah, okay, definitely. So, uh, the first hand axe comes down 17. I'm going to do them that for hit. That, uh, that's just exactly what you need to hit. Uh, and the next one is I'm not even going to roll the second one because that is a crit of 20. So 17 and 20. So the no. one that the one that gets the modifier was a 17, the one that doesn't right now. Um, okay. They both cause 1d6 slashing. So that is a 5 and a 4. And what is it for a crit? Uh, if you crit on an all crit, let's go with triple, triple dice. Triple dice, okay. So that's... Yeah. I'm going to go with that old third edition roll of yeah, so not doubling doubles. Yeah, so that's 9, 12. So the first one hits for 11. And uh -huh. the next one hits for... Uh, the next one just hits for 8. 11 and 8. Oh. All right, as you bring your both hand axes down, and the second one gets them right into the throat uh, with that crit, and the blood just starts seeping down, but he, his eyes just awaken, and he's like, oh, oh, but his, his screams are being choked on his drowning blood as he starts to... Let's just go ahead and let him go first as he starts on his turn. He's like half, half like almost blood just gushing, and he... And he Stands up and he grabs his great sword and he swings it at you, trying he get to an, curse at you. Doesn't he get an attack of opportunity if he's standing up? Sorry. Mm, no, not standing prone. He's not. Uh, he's not. I think Gimble's on top of him, range. right? Well, he's standing over him, yeah, but he's not leaving the attack range, the threatened area or whatever. Okay. Cool. So I'm going to go with a no. On that. I'm good with that. And he's going to swing his great sword at you as he's standing up to 
coming up from there, and he's just going to miss it completely, uh, and he's going to grasp at his throat again and uh, hold his great sword with one hand. His blood is just gushing out of there. Uh, one of his friends is going to walk over to you also and uh, swing his great sword at you, and this guy is going to hit, and he's going to impale you thoroughly for, well, maybe not thoroughly, for seven points of slashing damage as he gets you right into his eyes, and you can hear him grunting at... Anybody speak Hobgoblin? Um, nope. No. Um, okay, me. Is what he says then. And then his other two friends, instead of drawing great swords, will uh, both pull out heavy crossbows and they're going to shoot at Lucian because he is apparently their main threat. And one crossbow bolt just slings by your head, Lucian, missing thoroughly and crashing into a tree behind you. But the second one from the other guy, or six points of piercing damage as it gets you right into the shoulder, and you can hear nice. cursing going on. That has and to then, be. And then, uh, and then as they end their turn, you can hear the big one whose uh, throat is coming out. He manages to pull himself together for one moment. He'll scream out in primordial. To us now, blood breather. Which I believe somebody in your party speaks primordial. I do. So I hear him, I assume? Yes. To me now, blood breather. <laughs> As blood is gushing point, out of his throat. They, they still don't see me yet, right? Uh, no. Okay, but I well, heard you did, uh No, you did have to move into the tree line. Yeah, they, they heard you. And, uh, as a matter of fact, no, nobody moved up. Yeah, I didn't move out. We had two crossbow bolts, and then they say, sorry. Uh, uh, but it will now be uh, Zoltar. Or Zolt Zoltan. Zoltar, it is now your turn. You are Zoltan. You are back in... Zoltan. You are now back in the... Really That's sorry how we about that again. your name from now on. Really Zoltan. <laughs> Okay. You, uh, okay. How far the am Blood I coming? is a very mysterious and powerful being. This mystery is only exceeded by its power. Uh, you're about a hundred feet at the tree line from from the hobgoblins. Okay. Okay. Hmm. I'm looking at my thing here. Um. Can I go into rage? You can rage as a bonus action. Okay, uh, can I like charge? Or no, can I do um, one of my throwing weapons as my as I throw my hand axe at them? Uh, if you use, does a fourth level barbarian get extra movement yet, or is he still stuck on his twenty-five feet small dwarf <laughs> stunted leg movement? He's still talking. He's no offense, Kimball. Is the hand axe 75 foot range? No, no. it says 20 over 60. Okay. Uh, you could dash and be 50 feet away from them and be able to next round chuck a hand axe at them. Okay, I do that. Okie dokie doggy daddy. And then back to the top of the order, Lucian. Okay, so we've got uh, one that was laying on the ground, now up, bleeding heavily, and the other one that stepped over next to him to help Gimbal, right? And then the other two are working on... Crossbows. Uh, focusing on... Heavy crossbows trained on you. They haven't moved okay. so much as they just picked out crossbows and shot them. Okay, I'm going to move into... Uh, so I moved up to 90 feet from them. So now I'm going to move um, 30 feet, which is basically my full movement. And then I'm going to mm -hmm. cast a firebolt at the crossbow itself. So I want to at the ruin the weapon. Itself? Yeah. Okay. So. 
trying to think how many hit points would a crossbow have. My armor class would have is tiny, and it's in somebody's hands. It'd be a difficult shot. I'm going to use the same armor class as him. I'm just trying to think of how many hit points it would have. I'm definitely not resistant to fire, that's for damn sure. <laughs> Strange. Go ahead, give me a roll, sir. It's going to miss. I rolled a nine. You have so as I oh. inspired? You're inspired. Oh, yeah. My apologies. I started the turn, and as I was walking past Pyrenee, I winked at her with a nod of thanks. And <laughs> that time I rolled a total of a 15. Well, a nine plus your, what, your spell attack is... Pardon me? Total of 15. I wanna. I like the ballsy maneuver of it. I want to say that you hit the crossbow. In his <laughs> hand, it's not armored crossbow. It's just a crossbow. He's even holding it out in front of you. It's a small eye I'll, I'll give a 15 to hit it. Excellent. Okay, I do a total of 9 points of damage with fire. As it smacks into it, the, the crossbow bolts, it, the crossbow itself, is relatively unharmed, a little singed, so to speak, but the string on the crossbow is not as hardy as the rest of the hardwood stock and the metal parts and stuff like that. And the string starts to flame and crasp, and it'll break as he tries to use it next round, but it's just kind of singeing and burning at the moment. Anything else? That's my, that's my total. Yeah. Okay, okay. And then Pyrene. Okay, so since I delayed, I'm assuming none of them came within 60 feet. No, but you can use some movement to get within 60 feet this round. Uh huh. So, um, how close is the closest one? They haven't moved, have they? They have not moved. Okay. Would that be? So since I delayed, can I use my feet away from you. first turn to move and my second turn to move and attack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can you can move. Uh, you move seventy feet uh, or thirty feet into them, and that, so now you're only a little bit away. You can move sixty feet away from them, fifty feet away from them, forty feet away from them. Your choice. I'm gonna be sixty feet but you away. Can make so I'll use my first turn okay. to move thirty feet towards them, mm -hmm. and then my second turn to get within sixty feet. So another ten. Feet. Oh wow. And um, so I'll sort of uh, yell something insulting to them in Primordial and cast Heat Metal on um, one that's wearing armor, but not the one that's mostly dead. Okay. Or actually, yes, the uh, one that's mostly dead. Does he have armor, metal armor on, you said? Oh, yeah, they, they all have metal armor on. Okay, so I'll cast it on him then. Okay. Can you switch the target of the Heat Metal once one target is dead? I was curious about that. I don't know, that's I what I was going to so. say. If I can, then I don't want to cast it on him. I want to cast it on someone else. Okay, I don't think you can switch your target once you've already started heating an object. Okay, then uh, I'll... Let's go with uh, the... Okay. Go ahead. May I suggest the other great sword user facing Gimbal? The yeah. The one who's not half dead, say. or actually over half dead? <laughs> yeah, then okay. I'll cast on the other great sword user. Then I'll cast on the other great sword user. All okay. right. So 2d8, or did he, I don't think he gets the save for that, let me check. Uh, he gets the save to see if he drops the object, he is not dropping his armor, so he just simply takes the damage and does not like it as he has disadvantage with all attack rolls. Uh-huh. Because he can't drop his armor, it's a, yes, it's a kick-ass spell. Yeah, I do love it. I used it the other day. <laughs> okay, so... It doesn't take a whole lot of damage. I rolled a 1 and a 4, so 5 damage. Um, okay. But I can use a bonus action uh, on my subsequent turns. Just kidding. So I'll use my bonus action to yell up to uh, Gimbal. You're doing a great job, buddy. Uh, <laughs> I, I think you can really take them down now and give him some inspiration. And yeah, don't call him short. <laughs> okay. No, I called him buddy. We're friends. <laughs> My short little buddy. <laughs> oh, and I also uh, yelled Gimbal. to them. I also yelled to them since it's my turn. And I understand primordial. They're calling the Blood Reaver 
to everyone in common. I got him done. Uh, Gimbal, it is your turn. Okay, um, I'm going to say to the big bastard, see you, Sonny, you're getting it. Uh, I'm going to go into a rage, um, and then I'm just going to come up with two hand axes again and wow up, wow up. Um, so the first one is... First one's a uh, 15, and the second one... Oh, work, 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 And the second one is an 18, so only one hit. Um, the second one hits. The yep, second one hits. So that's D6. So that's pretty. And what do I get for rage? What do I get for rage? Uh, another two. Plus two. two. So that's five, five damage total. Alright. Oh. You managed to it's slice right. into him, but he is still alive as he looks at you evilly. He, but blood is just good. He's, he's becoming pale now. His blood spattered armor is now more blood spattered with his own than can the I villagers of Haven's Meadow. The inspiration did it last for more than a turn? Yeah, you you ten minutes. Ten minutes. Oh, hold on. Now you could yeah, use it for the. the actually, if you want, you could use it for the second for the first hit and almost yeah. Yeah. Okay, just don't so roll yeah, a one on your inspiration dice and you hit him. <laughs> okay, and I rolled a six, so yay! Okay, I hit him. Yay! Right. yay. So oh yeah! The first one did hit. Okay, so that is another six to eight. eight. And that would do it. I'm taking six, two more, and I'm just checking. Uh, six plus two, yeah, eight, definitely. Describe how you have had this feeling of, of greatness well up from you that was given to you by Pyrene and dispatch the hobgoblin captain. Okay, um, as as I hear this absolutely glorious shout of, you can do it, buddy! Um, I take my two hand axes and I kind of like half climb up them and just where like, I've already started with the neck, just at the same time, just slice his head right off. Just one axe into the one side of the neck and the other one to the other. <laughs> Okay, and then it's their turn, and I'm going to do the crossbowman first, as one of them, who just had his fireball explode in his face from his crossbow, he takes another bolt out, and he launches it, and he pulls it back, and it just, as a string breaks from being on fire, and he curses and throws it down at the ground, and grows his, and grabs his long sword out, and looks at you evilly, and uh, moves 30 feet towards you, cutting the distance in half, Pyrenee. The second one, though, whose crossbow is still working, will take another shot at you, Luke, because why not? Ah, and he will hit you <laughs> as another why crossbow not? bolt for max 10 points of damage as he gets you in the chest thoroughly. You're taking a step back from this massive bolt that buries itself deep into your flesh. And then there's a hobgoblin with a great sword. On you, Gimbal. And Ooh. he will swipe at you and stab his friend in the heart as he's falling to the ground from you. He rolled a one. <laughs> and for the final <laughs> And for the final act of the bad guy's turn, you will hear a deep rumbling coming from on the other side of the wall. And only you, Pyrene, can understand it as it is in primordial. Uh, and it will be like, You have slain my hobgoblin benefactors. I shall drink your blood. Maybe these things aren't all beasts. Who knows? Zolt Zoltan, you're up. Sorry, y'all can't okay. see I'm doing my hand to the thing. Zoltan! <laughs> I will not attack. I will charge again. Uh, uh, well, you can, since you're 50 feet away from him, you can, one of them is actually real close to you now. He pulled his great sword out and is real close to where you are. He's like 15 feet away, 20 feet away. Even your short, grubby legs can get there in time. Or you can 
easily launch a uh, javelin or something out of Pandex. Your choice. He is with an easy range. Yeah, but I looked at my rage, and it only affects on melee weapons. And there's one that you can get one melee with on this round. Just uh, move up and whack him. I know. Um, I have two battle axes, one one-handed, two, and the other one with two-handed, and the other one is a hand axe. So wait, you see two-handed axe. Two-handed? Yeah, okay. Go big or go home. Yeah, unless of course you're using a shield. That actually may be handy because your armor class is pretty high, is it not, Zoltan? Yeah, 15. Yeah, I want to say you're using a shield. Oh, 15? Yeah. I'm saying you're not using a shield. That's That 15 is for two-handed. So I will use my two-handed battle axe at the close one. Mm -hmm. So what dice do I need to roll a D10? Uh, you roll a d20, and oh, then D20 add plus. your attack modifier, which I'm assuming is plus 5. I'm just assuming. Attack, attack modifier? Yeah, d20. Yeah. Uh, d20 yeah, plus 5. Uh, yeah, d20 plus 5. I'm going to be surprised if I get a 20. There we go, I got a 20. I was it. And uh, what's your uh, damage? You will roll, uh, since you're wielding it two-handed, that'll be, I'm assuming it's a versatile. So let's say it's a D10 plus your strength modifier. Yeah, it says attack bonus plus five, damage last type, 1D10 plus 3S. Flashing is what the S stands for, but you're raging, so you get an extra plus two to damage, so it'll be a D10, D10 plus, plus five. five. Okay. Correct. So, I need to roll a d10. Huh? Yes. Uh, roll okay. a d10. I got an 8, so 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay. As you uh, come up, uh, he was uh, just dropped his crossbow bolt, or crossbow, not, well, dropped, maybe not the good word. Tossed it to the ground, threw it roughly in anger and malice, and then strode up to. Uh, to the group, uh, grabbing his long sword, and then the dwarf barbarian just reaches into a rage, covers the remaining ground before him, and slashes him thoroughly with his battle axe uh, raw through his split nail armor. And if y'all will excuse me for just one second, I'm going to take my dog outside because she's barking. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm fine. Well, um, I think this is a good time if anyone wants a bio break. Okay. okay. I'll be right back again, too. Made sense for everyone's. I'm going. Yep. Yep. Okay, sorry about that. I'm back. Dog is outside. Uh, we are now back to the top of the order with Lucian or Luke. Did anybody else step away for a minute while I went to take the dog outside? We took a bio break. We're coming back. Where yeah, I am. I'm back. All right, I'm back. Fair I just it's quite figured, all right. figured that was probably opportune time. So. It was. I'm oh, sorry, she started barking. Apparently, my neighbor's feeding her cats outside, and so naturally, Drendel sees, you know, food being strung in the yard. She's like, oh, Grindle? no, no, you can't feed her. Yeah, my, my dog's name's Grendel. Love it. She's a little, 
She's a little baby monster. <laughs> uh, she's part lab, uh, mutt. So she's you know, medium average size dog. She probably weighs about 55, 60 pounds. Uh, just over knee high at the shoulder. Her head doesn't come up to my waist. It does. Uh, it's about mid. Her head comes up about mid calf. I mean, mid thigh. I've got two labs. Oh, labs are great dogs. The main the American labs as well. <laughs> I'm bad. Type on the terrier healer mix. Hmm? He's troublesome. Oh, smart me. dog. Very smart. Very smart. Very smart. <laughs> My uh, mom's fiance is about to get a gray lab, a full breed gray lab. A what lab? Oh, a gray lab. Great. Great. Gray. Gray, okay. Um, um, as a breed, other than that. mine's black. I've got one down to black. I used to have two blondes and a black, but sadly, last year my oldest passed. She was seventeen when she passed. Oh my god! And my next cell was thirteen. Grindle's still a bit of a puppy. She's just uh, over three years old. Ah, uh, my youngest oh, yeah, is. Alright, so anyway, back to the top of the order. Lucian, or Luke. Come on, Lukey boy. Sorry, I just took a bite of a carrot. <laughs> um, oh yeah, but, uh, you took a bow to the chest. <laughs> okay. Um, I would imagine that the other one, I'm going to do another firebolt at the other crossbow. Why are you okay. aiming at the, at the weapons? Because they can't fire arrows at us. I guess I should move on to hitting them. So, at this point, I say Ignis Radium, and I throw out uh, three scorching rays. Uh, two will be at the one in the back with the crossbow, and the one last one will be at the one that's closer to me that's engaged with uh, Zertan. So all three of those are at uh, that dude, the Z guy. Um, all three of those are at advantage, right? Uh, why would they be at advantage? Inspiration from the bard. Oh, uh, bardic inspiration is just you roll a d6 and add that to your roll on oh, what I you know. desire, and you've already used yours. You've already used yours. My party already needs to have uh, more bards. Sorry, I'm not as You can never have too many bards. <laughs> I'm not really a music. I'm not really a musician. I'm really a fighter. Okay, so the first one hits, I think, with a 19. That will hit armor class 17, just FYI, to speed things up a little bit. Okay, for a total of seven points of damage, the second scorching ray, natural twenty, so two d six, total of eight the first time, and eleven, so nineteen total on the second one. That's the guy in the back with the crossbow. Okay. And the third one is a two plus six is an eight, so that one just kind of wings off and smashes into the old crusty wall and dust kind of showers down a little bit as I kind of step back a little bit to try to gain cover from the dwarf if, if that's even possible. <laughs> okay, so let me get this straight. That was 11 uh, points of fire damage to the one with the crossbow and 7 points of fire damage to the one in melee with your Zoltan. So... Uh, scorching ray is three, right. three balls of uh, uh -huh. three scorching rays, and the first two hit yeah, on the guy with the one crossbow. Hit. So it was oh, eight okay. and nineteen because I created the second one. So a total of twenty-seven okay. points to me. And then the third oh, okay. one. My bad. Sorry about that. No, no, no. It's all right. My bad. And then uh, anything else, sir? Nope. Just moving behind uh, Zed to. Uh, get at Pyrenee. Okay, so you said one had closed some distance with me, so he's probably only about 30 feet away. 
Yeah, he, he's uh, in melee with uh, Zoltan at the moment. Zoltan. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to... But he's the only one that's within 30 feet. The rest are further away. Correct. Okay. I'm going to... Uh, cast Sleep on the other... Um, the one that's still using a crossbow. So I'll just kind of start oh, okay. uh, slowly tapping my drum in a way that's uh, kind of hypnotic almost, I guess. And let's see here. Five and And that's 25 to put him to sleep. All right. He, and uh, just I guess, FYI. I guess it's the lowest health, actually. Excuse me. It's not targeted. Sleep's just the lowest health. So 25 hit points. Yeah, and that would be the guy with the crossbow, since he only had two hit points left after being immolated with flame by Luke. And right. coincidentally, it is an area of effect. How large is this area of effect? Uh, it just says within 90 feet. So it just it starts with the lowest amount oh, of hit true. points, and it takes two away from him, and then yeah. it moves on to the next lowest person with hopefully 23 to put them to sleep, too. Because that would be enough to put together the other hobgoblin who is in melee with uh, uh, Gimbal. There you whose, go. Whose uh, flight armor is hot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, who's about to get burned in his bonus action, or my bonus action, too. So they both Which would wake him up again? Unless you... Yeah. That's okay, but... Um, uh, however, okay. point of difference, uh, if you want to heat the metal up, you don't have to do your action, then bonus action. Uh, we'll say that you can heat the metal up first and then put them to sleep so he doesn't get woken up by the uh, bending of the metal on his there body. There you go. That's, your choice. that's a better way to do it. <laughs> Thank you. And then, so... All right. Cause the damage and then so I roll to me. So before I cast sleep, he takes 12 uh, fire damage. Oh my. Yeah. yeah. He's almost dead. Okay, so if I do How that. How many hit first, points you have, uh, Gimbal? Left. Uh, even yeah. left, he's 7 taken. I still have 38. Huh? 38. Left. Uh, I'm just curious. You have 58 hit points left? 30, not 50. 38. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're not going to sleep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, it, is your it is your turn now, Gimbal, and the hobgoblin that was assisting his friend uh, just falls to the ground asleep, as does a couple feet away from him. There's one with a crossbow bolt. Both of them just kind of collapse to the ground, but you can now see the Blood Reaver. I thought it was Coming, a good pacing. Oh, away from you? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. How many? Uh, if you'd like to run all the way up to him in melee, I'll, I'll allow it. How many um, He's I about 30 feet away from you. Coming closer. I can only move 25. I can only move 25. Um, Let's call it 25. Right. Um, wait, I'm going to run up and I'm going to wow the moment both my hand axes again. Okie dokie doggy there. Okay, uh, first roll. Eight. Second roll. What's that a? Natural 20. So that's the eight. The, with, the eight was with my. the hat modifier. So that would be a mess. Uh, yeah, the uh, nat 20 though does hit. Okay. So, D6 <laughs> plus 8 for the rage, and how much extra is worth that again? Uh, a, a crit is just a uh, no, double think. the dice. Right. Yeah. Uh, five, I'm thinking to max damage and then you roll another dice, but I haven't 
decided on it yet. Yeah, you know, the idea of getting a crit and then rolling two ones on your damage dice seems lame. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, 13 points of damage as you slash in uh, right into the Blood Reaver. As, you can t- as I've described it before, it had those pinchy arms that come down and slash into you, razor-sharp chitons. You slice right into one of those, and where he'd been sucking blood from everybody, blood just streams out, most likely the villager's blood. And uh, it is now... And is now there one remaining awake cob goblin who is in melee with you, Zoltan. Slash. If I can find my d20 on my dice stream. There it is. And any moment now. And he will miss thoroughly as he. Beat it away from the side as he goes with your uh, uh, with your uh, battle axe. But then the Blood Reaver, as he looks at you evilly, and you can hear coming from the uh, over the hill on the other side. There we go. I will drink your blood. And it shall flow like wine down my throat. Well, you can't hear. To you, it's just. <laughs> but I can um, hear. Oh my! There's a nat twenty, my first one, and then there's a straight up miss, and then there's a. Hey, what's your armor class? Um, oh every I'll like, uh, be. Uh, I'll, nope. I'll, 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 I'll only be fifteen at the moment. Oh, well then that'll hit. Because I, I have 17 but I'm not using my shield. My and shield and then he misses. So as, uh, he just takes those little razor sharp things of his as he towers over you, nine feet tall, blood red type praying mantis looking down at you. And he slices and dices and slashes at you <laughs> with his razors. Cool, cool. Uh, uh, I hate waiting for my dice. Yeah, that'll be twelve points of damage with the crit as he slashes you thoroughly across the throat with, with that crit, and then and then two others you manage to block off with your uh, hand axes as he starts on you, and he crit and the blood reads. You can see his proboscis come down and he starts. <laughs> Sipping the blood up as it's flowing from you. It's like one to me. Well, he's just as he's soaking the blood up, and as he does so, he gets a little bigger. Yeah, he's need to drink first. <laughs> yeah, and then Zoltan. Zoltan, Happy your turn. Service. Okay, I will still. Uh, how close is the hobgoblin in front of me now? Uh, he's he's directly in front of you, sir. Okay, okay. So, oops, that's not my dice app. So I will do my d20 again, and am I still enraged or no? Yeah, you're still okay. raging. So I will do my D20. I get a 60, so that will be a 21. And then oh, that is a I'll, hit, sir. Yep. And then I will do my D10. So I got a nine, nine, because I'm using my battle, uh, my three in the battle axe. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Heads of damage to the hot problem. Yeah. As you slash into him again, his you you crash right through his metal armor and find a weak spot in there and just pry it apart to the sun. And as you do, it sinks deep into his flesh, and green hobgoblin eye core sprays into your face as this as this green blood red skin type thing starts to grow ashen and pale, and the life leaves his eyes, but he still rallies and holds. He's got one hit point left. 
And back to the top of the order. Lucian. So we've got the one that's still alive in front of uh, Doltan? Yep. And then we've Correct. got, I think Pyrene killed the other one, right, with the crossbow? They're asleep. Uh, okay. They fell. They <laughs> fell. Okay, at this point then, how far away from me is uh, Gimbal? Feet-wise. Um, Gimbal is quite a far away still at the moment. Uh, you can barely make out through the wall and holes in the wall. The Blood Reaver has left the, uh, the gap, and it's now... Uh, Gimbal fled another 25 feet past the wall up to it, and it's running it now. So 25. So here? Yeah. You're about a dash away. Okay. Yeah, because you were right behind... Uh, Zoltan. So I looked at I looked at Zoltan for a second and and uh, see that you know I wink at him and say you got this, and I look at Pirine and I say I'm going to help Gimbal, and then I dash the 60 feet to uh, to get within range. Okay. So next round I will be able to uh, attack. Okay. I'm assuming you don't want to be in melee with the beast. No, I, I actually I wanted to go up and give it a hug. I mean, I am bleeding, right? Oh, so, okay. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, probably about. I mean, it's a larger than man size, right? And it's growing, so I'm I'm thinking probably 15 to 20 Nine feet at feet. least. Oh. Yeah, I think I'll be about okay. 30 feet from it because uh, that gives me the range of okay. my spells. So. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. No mas. That moment when you intently look at your character sheet to see what you can do. <laughs> I know that feeling well. Same here. Well, I, th I was doing it like two seconds ago. I know exactly what I'm doing next. Yeah. Probably looking up... Spell Wait, ranges. It's my turn. You broke up for a minute. Are you waiting on me? Yeah. Oh my gosh, uh, yes. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> <But> all right. <laughs> no, um, okay, so the one in melee with um, Zoltan is still alive, correct? Yeah. Yes, we have one HP. One hit point. One HP. Okay. Um, in, and how far away insult from me? Insult him to death. I am going to insult him to death. Uh, I'm going to <laughs> And Not say, far, ten feet. what? He's ten feet from me. Feet. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna turn to him and say, "You're the feces that is created when shame meets too much too too much stupidity." But I won't stutter. And he will take <laughs> exactly one damage. I have a point right. of inspiration for that. That was pretty cool. I am stupid. I like it. Yeah, I, I'll I give it to you. I like that. Yep. Yeah. Yes. You'll get inspiration for that. Woohoo! Uh, just FYI, that is one of the things I hardly ever remember to give out. It's, and even if I'm playing, I never use it either. Uh, I'm not. I'm new to 5e, so inspiration's weird to me. But yes. Okay, that so was he a good can one. Take one damage unless he can succeed on a Wisdom saving throw. No, I just feel so. <laughs> Fuck. And he falls to the ground. <laughs> Is he dead? Just really more morose at the moment. Look at this morose motherfucker over here. You said he is dead, or is he just really remorse? morose? Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he's dead. Morose. He is Both dead. I was just okay. trying to be funny. Oh, okay. And did not <laughs> succeed. Well, he's remorseful that. now because he's dead. But Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And then... um. I guess I will go ahead and move my 30 feet towards um, the general direction of the Blood Reaver. And use right. my... Let's say you can make it to the wall. You can make it to the wall? 
Would it be safe to say I could vault yeah. through the window? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's no impediment. It's not a matter of use. That would be about your movements. Okay, perfect. And as my bonus action, I'll go ahead and uh, do heat metal on on sleeping guy. And hopefully... <laughs> <laughs> on sleeping guy. I didn't think about that. That's going to kill him. I forgot about him. I totally forgot about him. There's, there's two sleeping guys in the mouth. Roast the sleeping dude. Well, then one is like two hat points, and there's one that's like... Can Slow I just roast pick on... Hobgoblin. I love it. Yeah, um, you know so it takes seven, seven damage. You expect it from a Barbadian. That'll be enough. <laughs> Killed in two. That'll be enough to finish him off as he, uh, and he suddenly just like... Ah! You want some roasted hot problem. Yeah. Slow roasted to perfection. He smells quite nice, actually, for once in his life. Hey. He smells quite nice, actually. Huh? <laughs> oh, taste. Gimbal. <laughs> oh. Okay, um, Gimbal, as um, you can see, like, he's still raging and he's like, ah, see you. See you, I'm no wee, you're wee, and I'm gonna bloody well prove it. And he starts hacking with both his axe, and that's his way he gets a wee, um, yeah, he, he goes and takes some Louisiana hot sauce that he has in his pocket and pulls it onto the axe, and he goes, just full tonto. Um, that was a joke from earlier, because I've been hot sauce in my food, and I kept having to mute the mic. But it's just so cool watching this know why I had to mute the mic because I was panting because I missed it. Um, Wait, what? So, sorry, I just wanted to email her. Um, so he goes reckless, and reckless means I get... Um, advantage. Get, yeah, advantage, but then yeah. you will get advantage on me. No, I uh, understand. You, yeah. <laughs> so, that was just way too much right there. So the first one is... Um, oh, the first one's only nine, sadly. Uh, the next one is... Next one is... Sixteen. Sixteen will miss. Sixteen will miss. Damn it, he's went so full frontal that he's just... He, uh, he's swinging and missing. He, should, he can't be beyond his blind Louisiana hot sauce rage. Louisiana hot sauce rage. Yeah. Well, we were talking about barbecued uh, hobgoblin. I was thinking, throw some Louisiana hot sauce on it. <laughs> <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Oh, yeah. Some good old Since Louisiana. He's got advantage. Yep, he's got advantage. Since, now. Uh, the yeah, yep. I just rolled a whole bunch. Three, three hits on you out of his four. Little slashing maneuvers with his things. One of them does miss, but one of them is a crit. Ah. As he slashes and dashes with those little things. And with the crit, he'll soak your blood up with his proboscis. And so the crit damage will be... As soon as it shows up. See, sometimes my dice streams takes forever to show up. Okay, I need one more D8 anyway. Oh, no, there it is. So that'll be 10... 10 Points of crit damage as the first one slashes into your heart. Uh, you're raging, though. And then you'll have nine points with the second attack as he slings... Well, actually, it's the third. The second one misses thoroughly. He just catches you in the hand axe. The third one will come down and poke you into the head for nine points of damage. And the last one, as he's uh, doing that, poking in your head, he'll come back around again with an undercut into your belly for 12 points of piercing damage as he just goes all and like inframordial but all you hear is your blood will nourish and I shall implant my seed in your corpse is this before or after the lesson? huh? Oh, that's all the oh. piercing damage is what he does. So you yeah. can go ahead and have every bit of what I just did to you. Yeah, that's okay. I'm just going to work out. We don't want to have written down all the ones, so I'll figure it out myself. Don't worry. 
and enough of that, I'll tell you. And then. Uh, yeah. Dang, this dude is strong as a, as a, I don't know. Yes, you. And he is uh, uh, away from you a while. You can move and dash and be within near range than your dwarf stubby legs. So I'm I'm down to uh, twenty six at points at the moment. Well, you're not dead yet. Oh yeah, you're still fine. Oh no, oh, I'm still fine. Yeah. He's a barbarian. He's far from dead. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I thought after uh, that many hits, I thought he would die. No, no, but it's all the damage because and this will apply to you as well, Dylan. Okay, see all the damage I guess have because we have resistance while we are raging. Oh we yeah. Raging. yeah. I forgot about the rage. The slash pierce and bludgeoning. Okay, so it's moi. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, how far is he from me? That almost eighty feet from you. You no. You're a little closer. You were only say twenty five feet from the from the wall. Because you had to move up closer. So you can make it to the wall with your regular movement. And you can make it to almost just a short, short distance away if you dash. Or if you want to throw something at it from the wall, you could do so without disadvantage. It would be within range. Okay. So you could dash and be almost there. Or you could throw something and still be uh, moving a little more away from it. I will go. Let me look at what I have. Uh, I'm sure you have a hand axe to throw. Well, my hand axe is 20 over 60, while my javelin is 30 over 120. Yeah, yeah. If you, if it's just your move, normal movement, you could be able to throw a hand axe within range. Okay. Um, what does it mean by javelin melee? You can use your javelin in melee as well as to what? Your job is to develop it like a spear. Okay. Um, I just, okay, um, I'm going to go behind the wall and then throw my um, hand axe. Okay. Uh, that so would be a I D20 need to roll D20. plus, I'm assuming, 5 also. Yeah. I'm assuming almost every attack I'm going to ask you to make is going to be plus 5. Yeah, and I got a 17, so that would be a hit. So a javelin, no, a hand axe so be is a, a D6, right? D6? Yes. And then uh, does he still get to add his rage damage for a thrown weapon? It's strength, right? No, no. No, melee. No. Melee only. It's only melee attack? Okay. And... Okay. I got a so, quit. Six plus three. I got a quit, so I got a six. So that's a nine. Oh. Um. You don't get crit on damage. A crit is attack roll. Uh, uh. You just rolled max damage on the uh, the javelin though. Okay. Which is so, still good. Don't get me wrong. It's still good. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. It would be I a got, d6 plus your strength modifier, which is plus three. Yep, that's a nine. So that would be nine. Yep. Okay. And uh, next up would be Lucian. Okay, so I kind of uh, kneel down for a second, and I say speculo imago, and you see my image blur for a second and then three illusory images pop out next to me as I, we sort of fan out and start prepare for our next turn. So okay. unfortunately that's you, a I'm like the barbarian. So that's, my... yeah. <laughs> that's just Are in nowhere case. Near full because... <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. want to get hit again. And that's my turn. I don't blame you. 
Okie dokie dokie day. Karen A. Okay, so how far am I from the Blood Reaver? Um, I don't believe you're 30 feet, your, your movement. Oh, hold on. Yeah. So, um... Oh, you can yeah, mute yourself. I can use my what? Uh, I was uh, just telling Dylan he could mute himself if he needs to talk to somebody else. Oh, yeah. Uh, so uh, actually, but uh, I'm going go Piranha? To, yeah. So I'm going to uh, run up behind... Um, Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. The gnome. What's your name? Gimbal. 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 Going to run up behind Gimbal and sort of uh, put my hand on his shoulder and say something encouraging along the lines of, you're going to get him on your next one. I know it. And uh, cast heroism, which imbues you with bravery, you're immune to being frightened, and you gain temporary hit points. At the start of each of your turns, uh, which is spellcasting ability modifier. Uh, sorry, four. So you get four temporary hit points at the beginning of each of your turns. Wow. And I'll Was use that your whatever. action or is that? That's an action. Okay. And then... Um, so that was my whole movement, so I'm just kind of behind him now, or is that, can I back away a little bit? Uh, I'm sorry, what? Uh, uh, you can back away five feet from him. Yeah, I will back away five feet as far as I can get, and uh, use my bonus action uh, to, to just kind of reinforce that and give him some inspiration. Like, take him out. <laughs> rock Gimbal, <these> bitches. <laughs> do you rock? Okay, uh, can Gimbal do hand axes? He's panting now. <laughs> Pretty lady, say you die. And just runs up and wallops him with um, both hand axes. He's just going to do this as normal this time because being reckless went so well last time. <laughs> Uh, the first one is an yeah. 18, and the second one is a 7. That does so, not hit. So 18 and a 7. Um, and I'm not going to waste. Hmm? 18 doesn't hit. All right, both just doesn't quite pierce the, the hard chitin armor. You do have inspiration. The blood re yep. is very... I'm going to use the inspiration then. Oh, yeah, that 18. Okay. Would be pretty close. Uh, don't roll a one. Oh. Did you roll Not a one? No. That's the dice <laughs> giving you the finger, right? <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. It wouldn't. If only I had not said, "Don't roll a one." <laughs> uh, I think it's to cost me because when the D sexies like so far, I've only rolled like either fives or sexies, so it was like overdue the pro one. So I uh, thought, yeah. Dude. That ice stream suddenly loves me. Oh, it's hating me right now. <laughs> um, okay. And it will it will reel into you again. Just uh, rah, 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 those little things just flailing into you. For three hits, and then he'll stick himself with the last one, though, as uh, he rolls a one. Oh, and that's a one on a damage die, too. For 12, 12, and 8 each. So that's a total of 32. 12, 12, and 8, 32, so half. And then minus four. Sixteen total damage. Hmm? Oh, you you got four. plus you got four hit points. Oh yeah, so four hit points. Well, no, he got four hit points. Yeah. Okay. So that was a uh, at the beginning of your turn, you got four hit points. So. Right, sure. so I think it'd be a total of twelve yeah. damage after it's had yep. taken out. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, mass was never my strong point. Uh, 14. I'm at 14 hit points. 
and he laps up some of your blood with his proboscis again. Does it look like he's healing with those suctions of blood? With him, since this is a homebrew monster that Tony uh, wrote up, but Tony didn't write it up that way. I kind of like it. Uh, no, he's got some other shit that he can do though. It's pretty cool. Uh, but he has not hit with all four attacks yet, which is something else Tony's got him doing. It's pretty cool. So we'll. Uh, okay. I like that idea though. I just wanted him to to sop up the blood as he was uh eating it as just a, a flavor thing. So, that's anyway, cool. Yeah, that's no, it. I mean I would have thought that Luke would have Don't. been kind of watching that to sort of see if he um the blood was seeming to oh, yeah. heal him in some way. Yeah, uh, he does not. Uh. I did have him grow a little larger, though, just simply, you know, hey, look, he's growing bigger. The whole he grows as he uh, drinks some blood. But Zoltan, you're up. Okay, so I... You are close enough. Um, can I, da uh, can I dash in front of him now? Uh, you could use your regular movement to, uh, if you so desire. Okay. Ah. Uh, hold on. Give me a few seconds. There we go. Um. Okay, that's what I'm going to do is use my regular movement. And then, can I attack too? Yeah, you can attack too. You just, you're walking up and then you're hitting. So, what are you going to happen with what weapon? Okay, so I'm going to move in front of him and attack him with my two-handed battle axe. Okay, so roll your d20 and then plus five. So a d20 and plus five? Plus five, yeah. Okay. Hold on, my phone is a little bit red. It's raining over in my area. Okay, d20... So I got a 21 because I got a 16. Okay. And then what is my uh, no, battle okay. axe two-handed? So it's D10 okay. plus okay. strength modifier plus two because you're raging. So that's so five. That. That makes five. So I did a correct. So I did a 15 total damage. Okay, so 15. Yeah, that missed my thing. As you uh, heave your battle axe into him, and, yes, as you heave your battle axe uh, thoroughly into it, you burst into his chitinous armor hole, and as you do, do that, the, some of the blood lapping up from your friend Gimbal uh, comes running out from his proboscis also. It comes in through his proboscis and then falls right back out down, his, uh, down at his feet. And Luke, you're up next. Okay, so he knocked a leg off of him. Is that what I heard? Can you hear me? Michael, you're muted. No, oh, if he's muted, he can't hear me. I know. Uh, no, no, I can hear you when I'm muted. You just can't hear me. Uh, yeah, I heard you, and uh, it was just a descriptive way of saying that he uh, hit. Okay, uh, gotcha. He, he just broke, yeah, broke into the chitin armor of him, and just, you know, the uh, blood's rolling out. All right. So as you look at the four shapes of Luke, you see them, all four of them, sort of look at each other, and then clap their hands together, and as they pull them back, three balls of fire start juggling within them, and he then throws three scorching rays at, so I have to roll the hit with each one of those. So the first one is a one. That doesn't incinerate me, does it? I don't like uh, any negative effects for uh, botching other than a colorful description of uh, futility. 
All right, it kind of skids down like a poor attempt at throwing a ball. <laughs> okay, the second one is a total of a 20. For That'll hit. Six points of damage, and the final one is a total of a 25 for a total of eight points of damage. That'll miss. No, I'm just messing 25? with you. It's, it's nice to have new players. Yeah, it's nice to have new players every once in a while. You can mess with it. Hits. <laughs> <laughs> he, I just like to his do armor that on class the progressively hit. gets difficult, more difficult. Ah, damn yeah. it! Yeah. All right, and that's my turn. Okay, Pierre. Okay, so I'm going to turn to the Blood Reaver and in Primordial yell at him and say, your time of slaying the innocent has come to an end, and I'll point at an area about five feet behind him and whisper something and cast Shatter, which... Um, he has to make you a constitution wanna... saving throw against. Uh -huh. It's a 20 foot radius. You may want to back it up. A... This one says 10 foot radius. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. no, my bad. I thought it was 20. You're right. That's fine. Uh, whatever the radius is, you know your radius. You can back it up uh, to whatever it needs to be to, yeah. to not hit Gimble. And he'll make his saving throw. To not hit that yeah. yeah, you okay. know how big it is. You're good. Okay. And, and he'll make his saving throw, so what happens to him? Okay, so he takes half damage. Okay. And I roll 3d8. So he takes... Five damage. That was really pathetic. Five damage. Ringing... <laughs> uh, uh, by bringing on your drum, just boom, 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 boom. oh my god, what's the drummer's name for Led Zeppelin? Moby Dick. Uh, the song, song Moby Dick, not the drummer's name. Thank you. I can't believe I blanked on that for a moment. <laughs> it just uh, catches and crescendos into all together. It just keeps building on itself, and as it does so, you can see the shaking, the chitin of the hole, and he manages to shove it off, though, and just move forward a little bit out of the vibrato of the drumming. So he only takes five damage. But still, there are cracks, tiny cracks in those uh, chitin all over. Stress fracture from the drumming. Anything else, Perron? Perony? Uh, I'd like to move uh, backwards and away. <laughs> uh, is there anything I could take cover behind that's within my movement speed? Um, since you can't. Camp on the wall. You can you can hide behind the wall if you want. Oh uh, yeah, take some cover behind the wall. I'm pretty squishy. I wouldn't <laughs> want to get to the thick of things. Or uh, uh, yeah. Uh, it would be you know. All right. It would be like a thirty foot range or something to hide behind the wall. Yeah, I have thirty feet. So. <laughs> Gain four temporary hit points. <laughs> Uh, wait, um, about a death point. Okay, I'm going to, for my action, um, I'm going to drink a single, the single, the one single healing potion I have. Um, okay. Which is the, oh, the other one? Um, so that's three, four, six points I heal back, so that'll take me up to a total of 24, including four hit points. Hello. Uh, I'm then going to swap out my two hand axes and I'm going to take my shield and my sword and then that will be me. Um, okay. And then it'll be its turn. As he's like, oh no, your armor class is suddenly better. <laughs> we shall see. And you are much more healed. If I can find my pointer... On my dice. And once again, he's a uh, he's as you can tell, 
you, Pyrene, that he's not exactly a mindless beast. He is still a single-minded. As the hit, 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 he hits all four times, even with your shield. Oh, special thing. Uh oh. <laughs> Remember, That'll you be... have four temporary hit points. <laughs> Yep. Uh, yeah. Hey, one more. There we go. It'll be ten points, seven points, twelve points, and nine points. Twenty-one, twenty-eight, thirty-eight points of pierce. So that should just two. So I am down to ten points. Yeah, but you're gonna, uh, as he, you know, once again. What's up? Yeah, yeah. You'll get your four at the beginning of your next turn. And then mm. let me read up on what he does afterwards. But uh, that will be his turn as he just slashes and pierces into your flesh all over the place. Zoltan. I'm here. Just got that taken out the trash. It's a fun thing to do. Okay. I'm in front of the... Beast that is killing my comrade, am I? Uh, you're in melee with him. Yes, that's what I mean. Okay. I will do my D20, which is plus 5. I got a mm -hmm. 17, which is a hit, oh, no matter man. what. I'm doing good with this. Yeah, I'm doing really good. And I'm doing my two-handed battle axe. So roll a d10. Which, yep. A 15 altogether. Because okay. am, I still in, am I still in rage? You're still in rage. You're in rage. Yeah, you're still in rage. Yep. 15 altogether. Uh huh. As you uh, slash into it, you find uh, one of the chinks in his chitin armor from being shattered the little micro fractures up and down you find a good hole in it and stick it in and slash it in and reave it around for more damage and just clink off some of the chitin pieces of them are all starting to lie around shredded by the great Sultan who's mysterious whose power is only exceeded by the great mystery I just <laughs> mauled that badly Luke you're up before I maul <laughs> another expression <laughs> Nice. So at this point, I do I fire a firebolt at it. It's a ranged attack, one d ten for a total of eighteen to hit. That bounce off his chitin armor. All right, and I just kind of shift a little bit to keep them wondering, keep it wondering who is actually the uh, aggressor. Okay, I, I thought you were going to say shift from away from one foot to the other. <laughs> Pyrene. <laughs> um, okay, am I within 30 feet of Gimbal? Correct. Okay, so I'm going to run back up to him, and okay. uh, I'm going to lay my hands on his shoulders, and... Uh, tell him, don't worry, I'll take care of you. And cast at a two second level. For 13. So 13 wow. points. Wow, Mr. Buckle. And uh, I will. That used up my whole movement, didn't it? Yeah, you can't, okay. can't run back. Then I will just stay That's behind okay. you again. <laughs> All right. Turn. Turn. Not only do you, but because the blood reaver hits you with all. Or what they call the blood loss condition. 
which you're not because it lasts until you are magically cured and you are just magically cured, so never mind. You gain <laughs> hit points. You don't You don't take any extra bleeding damage. What the crap? <laughs> Finally got to use this special feature. Not <laughs> anymore. <laughs> That was, uh, that was wrong. Thank you, Peony. I think you will be dead forever. Okay, um, I'm now going to enter into a frenzy. Um, so to sort of accurately role play that, Jumbo is oh, just at the end of. I forgot oh, about the frenzy. I just, oh, ah, and he's just going to make. Now he's got a shield and sword. He's just going to swipe. I and forgot the about the freaking frenzy. Yeah, and then he's going to make another swipe. And they're both going to be reckless, so oh. it will be okay. advantage. So first one is going to be mess. The second one is natural twenty. Woo! First one's a mess. Second one's a natural twenty. Uh, so damage. Uh, well, that, yeah. Damage. Seven. Another D eight. That's 10, so what is that? That is strength 2, 4, so it's a high hit number. Uh, that is going to be. That is going to be 14 points of damage. Oh my! And you slam Damn. into the Blood Reaver. He is not, I mean, he's beyond big nasties or whatever you would like to to describe that less than halfway. He's now at a third. Yeah. He, he, he's, oh, he's not looking well. And he'll say in primordial, I will come willingly with you to be trained by whatever master you want. I will serve you and your progeny if you all will accept. As he slangs into you all. Anyway, he's, he's still whacking you, but he's he offers to uh, join you all. It's and he will once violent. again hit... <laughs> eh, he will hit uh, all four times this time. Hey, reckless, right? Yep, Nine... Yep. Eight, a six, 23 total, and eight, 31 points of, as he ran and bleeding oh. until magically cured. Okay, so, so that's down to... to That'd be wrapped down, down, down 15. So 12. Then but you can wrap that Uh-huh. Oh, wait, if it's routed down to 15, then it would only be 11. Yeah, well, no, um, on the beginning of your turn, just add four hit points to you. No, 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 it's, it did not do 31 there, so, it, so I add 27, so it would be down to 12. I only got 12 hit points left, is what I mean. Oh, okay. oh okay, okay. It's not that it was rounded. It got rounded down to 15 points of damage, but I am now on 12 hit points. Okay. Ow. If I hit you, will you join? Will you join? Or allow me to join and be your blood reaver instead of the goblins? Uh, um, is, he, is he giving me time to respond to him? Yeah. So I turned to everyone and said, "He's trying to swear fealty to us in common," and I shout uh. back. Nothing that you could ever promise can make up for what you've done. You will die this day. Now, wait a minute. There's some intriguing possibilities here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Right, come on, Luke. Your knowledge will not make up for the children that have been slaughtered. You can study it when it's dead. <laughs> You're making some valid points. But if we only had time to argue it. Gumbo. Luke. Luke. Just Dumbo study Dumbo. its brains or something when it's dead, okay? <laughs> Dumbo with you. With or else he'd all first. To swear loyalty to you know, help him survive or whatever. 
Okay. If he so could speak my... with you, Luke, he would, but he can't. <laughs> Only speak uh -huh. in primordial. Zoltan, your turn. Frenzy. Okay. Frenzy. Yeah, that's what I'm. Am I still right, in rage? Frenzy allows you to do. You're still By raging. Way, yes, and uh, another attack in the bonus action. Yes, that's what I'm going so to do with Frenzy. I've kept. I can't believe I forgot about Frenzy. I'm such a right. doofus. Hey, that's what happens okay. when you, you know when you're new, like regens or something. Like that. You, if you build a character up, thing they can do. But if it's like, oh, hey, I'm making a you know, six level character, you forget stuff. It's common. It's all good. Don't worry about it. Okay, so I will D20. I got a 17. So that's a it, hit. Is that a 17 total, or is that 17 with your attack bonus included in it? Uh, no, 17 plus my attack bonus. Okay, so hit. Yeah, and so that would be over 20. Bonus. Okay. A bonus. And uh, you're, you also have another bonus attack because of the frenzy? So I will roll two d20s. Uh, just roll one more. Yeah. I got a 16, uh, so that's a 21. That'll hit also. So you can roll a d10, add 5, and another d10, and add 5. As you hit okay. both times. Okay. Okay, I got 1 at 9, so 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 for one hit, and then 11 for the second hit. Alright. That's 25 points of damage as you whack and you suddenly remember, oh my god, that's right, I can really just, just psyching yourself up like Hulkamania. <laughs> and the dwarf just goes crazy and slams him. I can do a great Randy Macho Man Savage, but I really can't do a Hulk impression as he... Uh, Brother, wax into. Oh yeah! Here we go! I'm gonna smack you. And he's 25 points of damage from smacking into this thing. That one, that one, that one. Fully overwhelmed your microphone. That one may be a bit young. Oh, All right, so Luke, so Luke begins the the weaving dance that he did earlier, and. He brings his hand together, hands together, and says, "Hum them to sleep," and he blows um, what appears to be like a dust onto the uh, the blood reaper. Nine, ten, eleven, for a total of thirty hit points. Try Dang, to oh mother God! Sleep. What was that? We'll yes, sleep. I know oh, what it was. Sleep on it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I thought that you. I wasn't no. getting your. For total thirty points. Whoa, you did thirty points with it. Oh, okay. Yeah, he falls asleep. He uh. Oh, I got. Falls at your feet, uh, Gimbal. Hey, Gimbal, you are still alive, Dale? For now. <laughs> uh, I uh, I think we should uh, kill it. I think wow! We should... Now but you want to kill it, Luke? After I take a look at it. Oh come that, on! Well, that was that was your task. I'm gonna allow I'll keep an initiative for a moment. Pyrene, would you like to do anything besides discuss this? Would you like to walk <laughs> up and stab it or anything? Um. How is uh how's Gimbal looking? Is he pretty rough? Not yeah, she has he has twelve hit points, I believe. Yeah, Gimbal has twelve hit points. He's supposed to remember he will now have this bleeding loss damage because it was another four hat. So All that right. needs to be <clears throat> so I'm going to, uh, Not a lot of blood coming from him though. I'm going to uh put my hands back on his shoulder and say, Well, we have a moment here and heal him again. Ah, uh, 
Yeah, sorry, not sorry. Why, Bard? Why are uh, you suiciding? Keep it in the mission for Kirkcaldy and Gimble. How much? Uh, fifteen hit points. Fifteen. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So that's uh, up to 27, and then back to 4 would be 31. Okay. Would you uh, like to take this opportunity, Gimbal, to do anything? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. And as I back away about 20 feet, I'm going to like slowly create this kind of like really ferocious sounding war drum kind of beat and tell him, go get him, Gimbal. <laughs> Uh, Gamble is just too far gone in the frenzy. He is just, I'm just and he's gonna just uh, again reckless. Uh, no, uh, yeah, reckless. Okay, too. It's an uh, advantage. Any okay, you can reckless, but you have advantage and auto crit. I'm gonna put advantage anyway. I'll just go for that. So he's gonna hit twice. So first one is a uh, twenty-four. Second one. That'll hit. Uh, 20, but not an actual 20, or uh, total of 20. You have inspiration. It's asleep. Okay. Uh, a 20 would hit, though. Uh, oh, okay, never mind. And, and both are hits, and both are auto crits because it's asleep. Oh, all right, cool. Um, and uh, I'm assuming, Drive, huh, you just maul this thing to death. You can roll if you really want to know. <laughs> um, first one is 15, second one is 19, so, yeah. yeah oh, it's, not that, not that overkill. That's bad. Uh, if numbers were or not. What's that? He, he, he's, yeah, you, you lop his head off, you, you whack into his nervous system, right into his brain, uh, embed your your axe into his spine, or sword, actually. You're wielding a sword. Yeah. Um, I just, I'm just going to like keep wild and stuff, and see until someone basically drives me off, or I collapse from exhaustion and the frenzy, that I need to, like, to whatever is left of the rage, and then I'll be... Can't be too long because I think we've had quite a few rounds. I'm just going to be like, and, and you know, the shields get in there. It's just it's, I'm just tearing the thing apart. Pure look at the right. one. Zoltan. Yep. Zoltan, are you going to continue to beat on this lifeless corpse with your buddy Gimbal, or are you going to try to drag him away? Um. Hmm. <laughs> Luke, is that okay? He's already dead, so you can't do any research on him. <laughs> Luke has proceeded to walk over, and he's slumped down next to the wall, and he's kind of looking at the arrows that are stuck in him still. Doesn't wait, seem wait. to care if you... Did, did the, did the uh, other hobgoblin that was asleep on the other side of the wall ever die? Still asleep. Two hit still points. <laughs> It, Wait, who's still asleep? Still sleeping too. Wait, who's still asleep? Crossbow there was a hobgoblin with a crossbow. Oh yeah, I forgot about him. We were so focused on the um on the blood thingy, we forgot about the hobgoblin. I thought, uh, yeah, the blood waver. Who wants to kill him? Well, I took my turn already. Are we still in initiative? Uh, it's my. No, I'm gonna drop thing. the out. Uh, I just wanted to. Somebody would let the blood reaver just sleep and try to tie it up, or just finish killing it. I, that's all I wanted to keep you in addition for one round more, just to see what would happen with that. So you are now out of initiative. The blood reaver is just a. Let's just say for another little while, you continue whacking at the Blood Reaver until it is a bloody mess. Every bit of the blood that has drunk from the villagers has been spilled back onto the ground as you continue to whack at it, Gimbal. You eventually realize this thing is no longer moving and you snap back into reality. What would y'all like to do? Uh, I'd like to go over and uh, 
viciously mock the sleep. No, he can't because he can't hear me. Just kidding. I'll just shoot him with my crossbow. Okay. Oh, the remaining uh, hobgoblin. <laughs> no prisoners. How far is the hobgoblin from me? It's okay. He's been taken care of. Well, he's a goblin, so we can't yeah. interrogate him anyway. Um, yeah, they speak some broken common. Okay, so I look at I mean, everyone. They, they generally speak the common. They could. I look at everyone. I say, do we want to try to get information out of him? No, we just want to kill him. No. Up to y'all. Lucius. Um, probably would be helpful if we did a little bit of investigating. All right. You got more of that rope? I do. I got fifty feet of it. Would you mind tying him up? Sure. I'm going to go back and see where Bishop is and see if he tried to run off. Oh, that little short munch can do. That's when you'll see Bishop uh, where you left him. That's a tree line, I'm assuming. Uh, he'll have uh, made his way up. He's uh, tied, so he's not. So the whole time you all were in combat, he's just kind of... Ugh. Trying to, and he'll be still bound and gagged, but he's managed to make his way up the slight slope of the hillside to the uh, wall, and he'll be like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he's gagged. He's right. gagged. So does that mean we lost him or no? No, he, he's he's, no, he's right next to us, but you need to go tie up the left top goblin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm going to do. I'll just tie up the last sleeping beauty. Now I'm watching Dude Where's My Car tomorrow morning. <laughs> Doing it. <laughs> so Luke looks over at uh, Gimbal and says, Man, you were just a dynamo over there. Just a little dynamo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you want a piece of me? Colin, little wee man. Oh, well, I'm just saying, you did very well. No offense intended. Uh, hey, Gamble. I cut him down the speak side. before I think. And you can still hey, see Gam the gim Gimble's like half still in the rage, and it's just like, the, you can see the hand is taking every little bit of effort Gimble has to not like, reach down my a hand axe and launch it at Luke. Hey, Gambo. Nice going, little man. Uh, and then he's going to launch it at um, Zoltan. <laughs> <laughs> I'll allow it. I generally don't allow PvP, but. Um, so, roll to hit. Uh... Wait, who's going more than me? Yep, it's. Uh... Oh crap! What what die? Uh, one second. I I'm not used to this area. At as uh seventeen. D seventeen. What's your armor class? Oh, fifteen. It hits. I've seen it hits. So at as D eight. One thankfully. Um, plus a dexterity of two, so three three points of damage. Oh, that didn't even scratch my armor. Well, you took three points of damage, so it did a little more than scratch your armor. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have like the, just a flesh I, wound. <laughs> I only have like forty nine health, I believe. I don't know. My thing is crashing on me. Yeah, forty nine hit points. Yeah, so down to forty six. No, you're down yeah, I didn't to hit what? You. 47. 47? I thought you said you did 43. Yeah, I mean, no. no I did, I, I did I, three points of damage. Remember, you're still in rage, so it's only two. Oh, no, it's only one ounce. So well, we're out of oh, yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, not hmm? being hit or not attacking anything. So you all are both out of rage now. Yeah, okay, right. So, um... But, uh, um, at this point... 
Fisher will get in between you all and be like, mm, 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 and hold his, his bound wrists up, like, cut me, like, the motion towards his gag. Mm, mm, mm. I'll, I'll turn Zoltan and be like, motion please look at the hobgoblin, and then I'll pull the, uh, the gag off of Bishop's face while holding, like, the bind to hold him still for just a second and say, what? Uh, Wait, what did you say? Uh, if you all would quit fighting each other at the moment. Go tie up the ho hobgoblin, Zoltan. I already did that. Oh, okay. Okay, hobgoblin's tied. Uh, if you all would quit fighting each other, maybe there's a possibility that we can possibly uh, harvest one of the eggs and embed into one of the hobgoblins. So that we can have another Blood Reaver. I can make a fortune off of this thing, and I'll split it with you. I put the gag back in his mouth, and I push him over. <laughs> okay. Wow, and I thought um, Little Man here was evil. He's trying to profit off the death of innocence. Yeah, I know. I thought this little, um, little was barbarian here was evil. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go over this dead blood reaver and see if I can determine where eggs might be on it with investigation. All right, give me an investigation roll. I can put him to sleep again. He's due. He's annoying. Oh, Henry. Yeah, what do you want? Um, ooh, and I probably failed that miserably. Eleven. Total investigation. Can I do the investigation roll? Uh, are you proficient in an investigation? Uh, what um, is... I'm a jack of all trades, so I'm half proficient in everything. But, uh... Yeah. Investigation... Well, I'm not questioning you, the barbarian. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, not, not uh, the, the barbarian. Uh, Scott, Scott is like barbarian... Letting other people make another role. Is barbarian's good in... Sure. Huh? Not typically. Let's go with the nature. Oh, um, I'll allow a nature or survival roll. Uh, what what die is that? Darwin, I, I would say no. We aren't very decision and insight or investigation. We're not very insightful people. We're barbarians. We are rats. Uh, nature maybe. Uh, nature maybe, but the others. What one. what die is for nature then? Uh, nature uh, D20 plus your wisdom modifier. No, oh, is it intelligent? Okay. So D20 plus intelligence? Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I wouldn't imagine you'd have much of a, uh, a modifier. You really shouldn't. Okay, I got a 20, so a minus 1. So that's a 19. Um... Let's say, uh, after, uh, especially since it's a big bloody mess at the moment, most of its pieces parts are now easily viewable. It's not like a heavy dissection is needed, but uh, sure, y'all can find, y'all can all get together and look around, and every one of you can sneak and look, and you'll find that the, the huge proboscis thing that he was using to lop up the blood uh, at the bottom of it, kind of like in his chin area, would also be uh, an egg sac. He uses the same proboscis to uh, lick up blood to penetrate into someone's heart, and there is where he will ingest the, uh, or inject, ingest, inject the uh, egg sac into him, a la not quite alien, where the, <coughs> not quite like that, but more of the pierce into the uh, heart and inject it there. Come here, Bishop. What are you going to do? The perfect oh, recipient of an egg. He'll he'll manage to reach and grab the the gag off on him and be like, "It wasn't my fault. He was supposed to. He was preserved. Corpse. He wasn't supposed to just come out like this. The hobgoblins tracked us down, and and." And released him. 
It wasn't my fault. None of this was my fault. I was just supposed to deliver the body. Gamble to uh, Miss Haven. Gamble at this point is going to take an egg. Uh, can Gamble see an egg to take, sorry? Yeah. Are they like, yeah, are yeah, they yeah. loose? Yeah. Gimbal's going to take an egg and he's going to come up over him and he's just going to like, just right above his mouth and just be like, right, you tell us exactly who was buying it, where you were taking it, and everything else we want to know, otherwise this egg is going down your throat. I, I, I don't know his right name, uh, but it was, uh, it, uh, uh, he only went as... The shadow. I, I didn't really think this far ahead. Uh, uh. <laughs> Dylan's cat. His name was. Uh, cat. His name was uh, Shadow. The shadow. And I was supposed to meet him at the uh, the Golden Winch Tavern in Mist Haven, and he was going to give me a thousand gold. For the corpse of one infected with the uh, the blood reaver. Now we, I was going to uh, purchase a uh, corpse. We were God Henry was uh, infected. I, I managed to get on the the wagon and spur the horse, and we managed to outrun the thing afterwards. And I was like, well, I, I have my. I didn't even intend for Henry to be infected. I meant to purchase one. Can, um, I suppose can, that uh, can I make an insight check to see if he's lying? I, I think this is a fair shot. I think he still intended Henry to be the victim. Uh, you, you can, and go ahead and give it with advantage or, say, disadvantage his deception skill because he has been beat, he has been hammered, he is. There is no more fight in this man. Okay, uh, 17. Yeah, he's... He's telling the truth. He was okay. contracted to to uh, buy a, a corpse with an egg, and uh, that's how he was able to have protected. He was giving a scroll of dental repose to keep the corpse fresh so that the... could be delivered to uh, the Shadow at the Golden Lynch Tavern in Mist Haven. So the egg and, uh, now, the while egg he didn't over. know what the shadow wanted it for, you, go, you can assume, and he was nefarious plans, but he didn't care. He was making a thousand gold on it. Okay. So the egg's still over him a go. And I look up and I kind of wink knowingly to the party uh, to signal what I'm meaning here. It's a big, sorry, I'm going to use it a big so, uh, who wants to make a thousand gold then, eh? Um, Better uh, idea. Yeah. And then, just just as Henry starts to panic, I'm going to punch him and knock him out. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, fair enough, I'll, I'll do it. He's tied, he's prone. And he is a man of some skill, but he's got no hit points. He's pretty much a snob. Okay, yeah, you knock him out. Okay. Um, I crush the egg, I throw away the egg, and I just look at him waste of space. Right, I say we take this one back to the kid and let him deal with his justice, and then I think we all know where we're going next. Why don't we use him as bait to try to find out who the shadow is and take them out too, and then turn him in? Do you, think, do you think a little friend will go for that? Do you, think not the, do you not think the moment we're going to him, he's going to make a, a dash for it? Maybe. Let me talk up. That's a valid point. Well, I'm going to go uh, wake up the other hobgoblin. Why are you going to wake up him? Oh, because he's tied up? He's tied up, right? Yeah, and... Yes. Okay. So uh, we're going to wake him up and smack him across the face. Non-lethal damage. The beast, though. Alright, fair enough. 
Well, well this is going on. I got two hit not to interrupt, but interge to interject. Um, Luke is going around with his book, and he's sketching out and taking notes while he's listening to the conversation. Sorry, go ahead, Pierre. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to try to intimidate this woken up hobgoblin, and tell him, or and, and tell him if you, uh, unless you want to end up being vessel for now, because he'd probably like that. Never mind. Um, they tell him, unless you want this to be a painful death, like your brethren, you'll tell us who the shadow is. With a 20. Uh, he'll curse in a hobgoblin when he first went far, far. Uh, uh, elf wench. You are an elf, right? Yes, half elf. Half elf, yeah, right? Enough. Alright, and all he sees is elf. He's, you know, let's just face it, he's not that cultured. Mm, elf wench. Uh, shadows. Uh, shadows of your death will fall soon. What do you mean? Who's a shadow? I don't have a picture of a hobgoblin, so you're going to have to look at my ugly mug. <laughs> it's okay. Um. So I'll say, uh, who is organizing you? Who is the leader of all of this? He'll uh, kind of, he's tied up, but he'll kind of jerk his finger around and look over to the side at uh, the uh, first hobgoblin that uh, was put to sleep and slammed by the hand axes of Gimbal. Like, slack over there. He's down here to capture, uh, got hit. The Blood Reavers told us uh, an egg had been stolen, and uh, we were sent to track it, bring it back. Mm. And then mm. you change. Puny elf bitch. Uh, you slew Blood Reaver. Impressive. Um, at the term, Blood Patch Gamble is going to slap, not to cause any damage, but he's going to slap the side of the whole goblin's face. God speak to the prison lady that way. I don't take a bridge to it. Listen here, you puny little man. If I weren't tied up, I'd beat you now. Untie him. Untie him. One on one. Come on. Come on. I'll take it. I'll punch him with Let's do it. Tell me who stole an egg you and what you mean by stole an egg. Um, we're not sure. Uh, the Blood Reaver just told us that uh, he had implanted an egg and uh, we tracked its scent. We can do that, you know. We smell the Blood Reavers. And so we tracked it for two weeks. We tracked it until finally we caught up with him in Haven's Meadow. A village, and we slew all you puny humans and fed your blood to the river as it emerged. And then we are going to let it grow and take it back to our Red Skull camp. I know Where's nothing of the shadow. You no, know, Red Skull camp. What? You don't know the Red Skull? We Red Skulls are, are known. We are marauders. We maraud your puny kingdom of Westmark all the time and take what we need. Up in the Grey Mist Mountains is where we dwell, where you humans cannot come. Why can't we come there? Because you will be slain by the Red Skulls! <laughs> you, uh, you didn't do a very good job of slaying us today, so I wouldn't be so sure of that. Uh... And I just kind of kick him and turn to Gimbal and say, do what you want with him. He doesn't know anything important. Well, uh, let me see it. Point number one. No dwarf, half elf, not human. Point number two, and then at point number two, I just smack him as hard as I can right in school. Mm. Bring it on, you puny man. You all look uh, the same to me. Uh, at that comment, Hand axe comes out and it's going to like come swooping down and it's actually going to cut the binds away from his hand. Um, uh -huh. uh, and he's going to say, and he's just, I take his hand at this point, yeah? 
Uh, uh, he will start to rise and uh, grab at a great sword. Um, okay. This was a crossbow using guy, so he had a great sword. He just hadn't drawn it yet. Okay, cool. Uh, so then I'm just going to go and try and hit him and kill him. Um, All right, let's go ahead and get an initiative roll real here, real quick. Okay. <laughs> you got a one. I got a one. Oh, he goes first. Would it be feasible to say that I could no, be part of the feet. battle since I'm standing right there? Where am I at? Go ahead, give me an initiative. I'm near him too, right? Sure. Okay. I'm 12. You'll beat him as Zoltan. Huh? Uh, you beat the Hobgoblin here, Nay. Oh. He got a 10. Uh, ha, huh, well, initiative. In, that case, in that case, I'm going to, uh, let's see here. Had some really good insults. Hello? There it is. So I'm going to turn to him, and I'm going to say, I got a, I you got a make that belt. And just kind of like some, like, Waves come forward from uh, my voice as I speak it, and he has to succeed on a wisdom saving throw. Does he make it? Come on, D20. Oh, man. He's dead. Well, I don't know if he's dead. I can roll a one. Yeah. Uh, he, he fails his wisdom saving throw. Two on the die. Then he takes two damage. I don't even have to look up his... Oh, exactly two damage. Zero. Yes. Well, sorry about that, little man. Roll. You didn't get nothing to do. I had already rolled his attack, and he had hit you, Gimbal, and I was rolling his damage. When, oh, oh, crap. Okay, yeah, you beat him. Oh, he goes down. He's, he, he's, his vision is filled with the bloodlust of getting this little gnome with his great sword that's twice the size of him when all of a sudden, what? You know, you're right. Clunk. <laughs> I feel really bad about myself. And you killed two people by mocking them to death. I love being right, He is dead. Man, you shorted and, uh, you have What'd you say? You have get. Uh, Oh, Fishapu is asleep or knocked out. Fishapu is knocked out. And, what are we uh, going to do with he, that he little skelly man? Hello? I'm sorry, Michael is speaking now. I'm just, just going to let him in there. What are we going to do with the bishop? Uh, no. Are we going to use him for bait, or are we going to turn him into the count? Yeah, we've, we've not decided yet. Um, uh, I think Michael was going to give us some flavor, so then we'll find out when we decide after we've yeah. got the flavor. Yeah. Uh, well, the, uh, the bishop is knocked out, and uh, whenever he does come through, he'll, he'll let you know that uh, the shadow has uh, eyes and ears everywhere and has probably already, or soon will, hear about what has happened here. And so any deal with the Shadow will be off. So, you know, there's no way to track him down now. He'll know mm. what happened here already. I'll hear mm. my picture back in the uh, I think I think we just go and take this back to the, this little uh, shit back to the count, and we... Um, Tell them what's happened, and we gear up for our next adventure of going to try and track the shadow down uh, later on. Before we do that, can we destroy the rest of those eggs? Oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You can easily a uh, build a, a bonfire and uh, destroy, burn the hobgoblins along with the what's left of the blood reaver and its but eggs, and just FYI, is it add a little flavor? Uh, when the mm, body is burns of the uh, blood reavers, you get that nice little popping noise of a, uh, you know, like pop, pop, like popcorn inside of it as this little innards expose and hit against the chitin, and uh, they actually, and sometimes it even screams. Like, have you ever boiled crab before? 
<laughs> yes. Oh, this is so good. Yes, you have. There you go. That is so what happens. Good. Uh, you hear screams noises from it as you heat it up. Now I want crab and, uh, and crawfish. You can easily now. destroy it all. See the villagers that were up to the side? Are they dead? Um, yes. Yeah. They've been um, pretty much completely drained of blood. Okay, uh, can we burn them as well? You know, just to be safe. Okay. Everyone, is everyone happy with that? I couldn't I'm happy. Uh, can we burn the dead villagers as well, just so there's no eggs inside of them? Just to be on the safe side. I'm pretty yeah. sure our mate is That's going to probably one off. That's a good I'm idea. I'm happy with that. I know that's kind of mean, but I'm happy with that. Okay, so I think then, unless I'm mistaken, that we're going to burn the villagers. We're going to grab uh, Bishop and we're going to drag his ass back to the count. Yep. Alright. When you get back to the count, uh, give me one second to put the count's picture back up here. And, uh, haughty voice, haughty voice. Give it. Oh, yes. You all have, uh, taken care of the infestation was going on in Haven's Meadow. Hmm. Congratulations. Oh, you all tell him the whole story and be like, oh, this is sad news indeed. I shall put the bishop and cast him in irons. Trading in such evil species like that is uh, punishable. But he shall be locked in irons and thrown in me dungeon. And if anybody finds this shadow, I shall put 2,000 gold pieces on his head. Oh, a beast like this can get through. Oh, but today morning, for the villagers of Haven's Meadow who met their demise at this evil hands. And all of uh, Bishop's uh, possessions shall be claimed and divvied out to survive from Haven's Meadow. Um, and uh, your name shall be even though nobody can tempt your You'll drum and you'll herald it also. I'm assuming you will have great writing and they shall allow you to re be reinstalled. And the two barbarians, would you wish, but good wine and ale and frothy beer and fire burning flesh, for you shall have it all. I shall honor for you that shall last for a week after this period of mourning for Haven's Medal is over, though, however. We'll have to wait a few days for that. You were doing such a great hot Great honor course, upon you. you cut out a lot. A... Yeah, what did I do? Oh, did I? <laughs> Your connection yeah. is betraying you. Um, I actually just thought it was me dropping connection again, so I didn't say anything. Okay, no, it, it's prone to happen to me also from time to time. <laughs> but great prayer to all of you. Who ends the D D five E one shot essence of life. Everybody say bye. Bye bye. Thanks for putting it on, Michael. Yes, thank you. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for playing, guys. Thank you for having me.